Runners only with Dom Harvey and Duncan Garner. Hey mate, how's things? Going good. I'm I'm so pleased you turned up. Um, we had this we had this podcast booked for a few weeks ago, and um, you you just you didn't turn up. This morning, I had my camera guy set up. I had you set up. I also had my mum set up. I'm like. I've got Duncan coming, but I don't know if he's going to turn oh. up. <laughs> so mum was like an emergency backup guest, but you were here. But so I'm that unreliable. So the first time I was, I was, I was pumped and ready to come. I blame MediaWorks right at the start because they scheduled. It happens to me. Whatever happens to me is that, uh, uh, um, okay. So I won't do. I won't schedule anything for a while. Then I'll schedule this. Well, okay, I better. I better. I'll do. You know, I'll say yes to this. So I scheduled it, and guess what? Every bastard possible would then organise meetings without knowing I had this meeting. So yeah, I blame Leon. Yeah. I, oh, oh, Leon, Leon Rat. That's he's the yeah, um, yeah. one of the Full executives guy. at Media Works. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, oh, well, since, well, since we're there already, maybe we start there. So um, today, FM. Um, that's the thing you've most recently sort of been in the headlines for, I guess. Mm. Uh, it was a talk station you were working at, part of Media Works, from nine a.m. to midday, and then it was just um, sort of cut off the air, and it was um, it was brutal. And there was a voice break with you and the breakfast announcer Tover O'Brien. Um, she said, "What did she say, Thuff?" They fucked us. They fucked us. Yeah, it was raw. Mm. Um, and you said it's betrayal. Mm. And then the station was taken off the air, and music mm. was playing a short time, short time later. It's probably still on YouTube. Like you can, that stuff lingers around forever. I think it might be part of history. Yeah. Now. But but you're um so yeah yeah tell us tell me about that day. So um the, the funny thing is the, the night before I was I got a um, an email from from a guy in um, Tauranga, a father a listener a caller to a to, to a show. He, his son was almost abducted that, that afternoon from school, from a school bus. He rang the cops, and then he emailed me. He said, you're the second guy I've thought about. Uh, this is fucking shocking in this country. What do you think, Duncan? And I, middle of the night, I emailed him back. You've got to come on with me this morning. Let's talk about it. So I was really excited for this day, you know. And I, and I, mm. I even arrived at work a little bit early, because, um, which is unlike me. And I had, I, I had this guy, Nick, the father, lined up, ready to go. And I arrived at the office. I saw Dallas Gurney across the, um, the, the, the desk. And I gave him a little fist pump, like, you know, I'm, a, I'm early, you prick, you know. Because they give Dallas Gurney, the boss yeah, of, the boss uh, today, of today, um, okay. today FM. So I gave him a little fist pump, and he sort of raised his eyebrows at me. I thought, oh. Yeah. Hey, is he going to share my passion for this story and this outrage of some bastard trying to abduct an eleven-year-old? You know, mm. and so and then I went into his office and he's, um, oh, I think something's going down. I'm not sure what it is. He said. So there was something happening, but he wasn't quite sure. He knew there was a meeting at lunchtime. Just get ready for it. You know, there's something to do with the station. Hopefully, we'll be okay. And I thought, I, I, was he, What was he telling me? You know, I was a bit confused. So I went in with Tova to do a breakfast debate. 10 to 9 and I looked at her and she looked at me and then I got a text message from the interim chief executive of MediaWorks saying I want to see you in my office if I can after your show today at midday and suddenly the Lego was being built you could see the picture right yeah shit's going together. shit's going down you know mm. um, and we flew through out the debate top it whatever it was and we said something's up we went public on it and then at 9 o'clock I took over and did my show I was trying to do the right thing professionally and People, got, people understood and they started ringing in, hey man, I hope you guys don't go. And then Tova crashed through the studio back and said, we're fucked. And everyone just came in, they were crying. So that was all over. They brought up the music. One guy actually who rang me, the last call I got, he'd rang me the day earlier, abusing me for for being me. And then he rang back and said, oh my God, you're going. And so he was. He seemed he seemed quite genuinely um, upset about it. We came off air. People are just... It's almost like, you know, we'd had, like, like a, 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 taking nothing away from Christchurch earthquake, but there'd been an earthquake in our lives, you know, yeah. a really big shake, and we... Well, it's, 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 yeah, it's unsettling. Um, we, like we, we, got taken to, we got taken to a meeting, and we got told there's two hours, consult, you know, we're going to consult you for two hours and come back, come back, it's all over. And we went down and had a couple of beers downstairs and left the building. Mm. We have, and most of them haven't been back since. Yeah. And then, so, so the weekend after that, what's that like? You, you wrote a column that weekend, didn't you? So I'm in, um, I'm at home um, with Buster. He's your son, how old is he? He's 12, he's 12, he's 12, yeah. He thinks he's 15. <laughs> anyway, so, and, you know, in fact, I mean, I'll take you back a bit. I, I went to pick him up from school, and um, he came out looking a bit worried, and I thought, what does he know? Of course, he's been through social media. Kids are on social media, you know, he's still up, and he, I, I, he hops in the car and says, oh, I've got something to tell you, and he goes, I know, are you going to be all right? You've lost your job. And his eyes sort of welled up a bit, and I said, oh, I see the, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's a great, great boy, I love him so much, but he, he worries sometimes about things. 
and you know you try and protect your kids from don't show them anything like the emotion but you know I sort of welled up there a bit too and we drove home I said I'll be right mate we'll be we'll be okay we'll be okay are you sure dad I said yep 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 yeah been here done that we'll, we'll be all right mm. and then I, I still didn't speak to my mum she and she was a you know your mother's listening to you and so mum had mum had had heard it. I didn't get to my mum till Friday night this was Thursday remember mm. it's two days and I couldn't get to her my phone was going crazy. Uh, I had to go to rugby practice that night with him, my son. So I drive out. We're talking to rugby practice. All the parents, say, you know, because it wasn't a very private dismissal. This was a public execution, as such, you know. Yeah. So here I am. Hi, hi to the parents. You know, just started this rugby team. And <laughs> they're looking at me. Yeah, it must be a weird feeling because you're, you're, you've got a recognisable face, and everyone knows what you've been through. And yeah, I suppose well, it, was it's like the, a, it was all in the media. Yeah, you, know, was, yeah. you didn't have to. You couldn't. You were in a cave if you if you hadn't seen it. Mm. So you know, I went to a fiftieth birthday that weekend and. I left. I left because um, I just I just couldn't handle all my mates. The fiftieth, you know, lining up to talk about it. Um, there's was so much support, you know, because once you become a bit of a martyr like that as a as a as a as a station, there's so much more support for it. You know, mm. oh, finally someone loves us. You know, um, <laughs> we we we, we needed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but so and, but I, I wrote that column on that afternoon on the Saturday afternoon. It took me five hours. I had tears in my eyes through the whole five hours, and. Um, uh, Buster kept going. What are you doing, Dad? I said, I'm just doing some work. He goes, You don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm just whacking out this column. And anyway, so I put it out there. I put my I put my email at the bottom of it, private email. And yeah, yeah, that's how I got hold of you. Yeah, that's right. Podcast. And the next, yeah, hey, <laughs> would you not got hold of me otherwise? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, wouldn't know how to. Yeah, so I'm up there. Yeah. Well, it was. <laughs> anyway, so so um, then I got like hundreds of emails. People sent me really quality emails, not yeah. just um, one liners, but they were. I remember when you said this six months ago about your dad or something, and you know. New Zealanders are good people. Yeah, really good people, and and they like the underdog, and they don't like it. they don't like when they think something's unfair and people have been treated yeah. badly. So, yeah. oh, rough time, rough time. Have you have you you mentioned you were writing the article with tears in your eyes and you were crying with your son Buster? Do you um have you always been uh, quite an emotional guy, or is that something that sort of crept up with you I with think, age? Yeah, I think um I think more, less so age, but more so events. Mm-hmm. So I lost my dad thirteen years ago to cancer. You know, lay under the bed of his hospice bed. When he died, so I carry that heavily. Here's my best mate, hard case guy. You know, mm. you, know you are a result of you know you are. Um, I've got you know kids. I've, I've, got, I've just been through a divorce. Um, I was selling the house. The house was about to go as well. So there's all these things were were, were were sort of crumbling around me, and the job was just one that I hadn't counted on losing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's gone too. So you know, cool. uh, no wife, no house, no job. What's next? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, get the car repoed. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have you have you always been um, quite resilient, or do you think you've you've sort of built it over the? You know, I've compartmentalised all my life, um, and what I do is I put things into. And it's a pretty good question. Um, have you thought about being on radio? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so it's, I, <laughs> I compartmentalise, right? So I compartmentalise. So yeah. I, I put. I just if something's if something's a really big issue, I just I put it up there on the shelf and I'll deal with that when I get to it. So I compartmentalise, and that's how I've managed to cope through. Um, marriage breakup through um, you know losing the kids to Auckland or you know having to having to chase my kids and um, through um, um, dealing with a, a, a marriage breakup and then my wife going to Wellington and I'm I'm in Auckland with my child Buster mm. you know he stayed with me you know yeah. I'm launching the AM show we got to be there at three AM and I've got a seven year old boy at home with me you know. Mm. Um, yeah, what do you mean com- compartmentalize? Uh, uh, well, there's an issue I deal with it. Yeah. Um, we might park it. And then I'll, because I have something that I have to address immediately. That's like today's work, mm. you know, or today's show or something. So I'll deal with that, and then I'll address that when I can yeah. get to it. There's no point in trying to address eight balls in the air at the yeah. same time because you won't, you won't do anything well. Yeah, it's funny. Funny you said that. I had Susie Cato on the podcast, and she yeah. talked about the same thing. She was dealing with like a miscarriage. Yeah, I know. Um, and she just sort of worked through. She was like, uh, she she parked it to one side. She said, you know, I had commitments to meet, so I just had to keep on keeping on, and I knew that I had to deal with it, but I dealt dealt with it once the job was done. You're correct. Yeah, uh, and so and so, so you did, and then there's COVID, the, the, the dealing with the isolation, uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, man, I, you've been I, through I, a lot. Man, I, I got arrested. Did you? I got arrested. Yeah. What um, for? Um, uh, wrongfully arrested. I, I was playing rugby. So my wife and I split up, right? And um, uh, she trespassed me from her, her house because I dropped my son off at the front door when it was wet. He had a broken ankle from rugby and. So I went too close to the house, apparently. Right, so it was quite an acrimonious split. It has become that, and um, mm. sadly, and um, 
so she, the cops turned up about six weeks later, and there should be a trespass notice because it was COVID. So I said, okay, so you can't, you, you, you can trespass anyone you like, you know. I, you trespass you, you can trespass me. So I trespassed. And then uh, a couple of months later, she where she was living, she needed to, um, I don't think I've spoken about this, she needed her lawns done to, you know, inspection. And I, uh, she said, can you come and do them? So I went around to her house, mowed her lawns. Didn't think much of it. Six weeks later, I had police come to the street where I was living in my house. I was playing rugby at the front um, with my son and other couple of mates. And the police came down the street. And I thought they were coming down to see this gang member who lives down our street. Oh, yeah, God, he's in the shit again. And they, they've got a police park right in front of me. And I, I said, hey, guys, you know, and I'm with the ball. And they said, Duncan? And I said, yeah, 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 how are you, mate? You're under arrest. I looked at the gang member's house and I... <laughs> what? Well, what for? And they said, we'll tell you a little bit. Hop in the car. And I said, hop in the car. I said, hang on, mate. And they said, I said, can I go get some, I've got gum boots on, rugby shorts and I think a T-shirt. Can I get some clothes and shoes on? They said, well, we'll come with you. And I said, hang on, mate. What's, what's, what's all this about? Shapers. This was on a, like a, let's say it was a Wednesday, Tuesday night, five o'clock, something like that. So I hopped in the car and I was... In front of, in front of your son too? Well, my, my wife turned up. Okay. Next, my wife turned up at the same time. But yes, but your son saw this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, she she grabbed him and took away. Yeah, that's she'd that's been embar- she'd been with the police all day. Right, but that's embarrassing in front of your son. I yeah, think. humiliating. Yeah. You know? And um, so but I'll be right, mate. You know, hop in the car, and I'm asking the the cop sits in the back with me, and I said, mate, I'm I'm not I'm not, I'm not a threat to you. And he goes, mate, you more lip, and I'll throw you in handcuffs. And I said, okay, I'll shut up. We arrive at Avondale Police Station. Well, were, were you were you were you giving him a lip? Like were you being? No, I was really polite. I said, yeah, I, yeah. I just asked what I'm doing. Right. Here. You know, as, um, as, as any, I've as always any, respected police officers. Yeah, yeah, I've always yeah. respected them and, and, and supported them in their job. You yes. know? Um, so I get to the police station. I recognise all the officers there because I've done stories over the years with news and things, child abuse stories. With, there was one cop I went to school with, another cop that we did some child abuse work with. Anyway, they said, hey, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm here. <laughs> went into a room and they said, you'll need a lawyer. You're going to court in the morning. I said, what's this for? You, you went to your wife's. Um, house where she lives and you were under a trespass so you breached trespass and I said nah I said you've got it wrong you haven't he goes no we we'll save it for a lawyer here's a list of lawyers I said I'm not getting a lawyer I said uh, he took my phone off me and I said you need to ring my ex-wife and ask her one simple question was I invited around there I mowed her lawns they said oh oh so they locked me in this room and um, what like an interview room yeah, yeah. yeah it's locked it up. and so I sat in there about an hour later they came back and said oh Here's your phone. Sorry, we'll, we'll give you enough time. We've, we've, we didn't ask that question. I said it's the most basic question, mate. And um, well, well we, we didn't ask. And I said, well, it's pathetic. I'm, I'm walking home. And, oh, I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't want to lift. They said, no, we have to. It's getting late because it was late now. It's nine o'clock at night. Mm. And so they they dropped me home. I feel pissed off about it. Yeah, angry I haven't spoken about. It. I went to the AM show the next day. Right. Did the sh- did the show? Oh, wow. I, I did the show and. Um, <sighs> See how are you? How are you? I mean, I, I'm I, did, just I, did, I did radio for a number of years, so I know there's, there's a there's a saying: you have got to leave your problems, leave your ego, leave leave whatever at the studio door. Mm. But it's easier. I mean, I never dealt with something like that. That's, no, that was just that was. Um, so you go into the AM show the next morning. Do you tell you tell Mark Richardson and uh, the team there? No, no. But I told. I always kept. I always let the bosses know what was going on you know, mm. in, in the marriage because um, it got volatile and certain things. So I was. And you know, I've I was always told and taught well by my father about how to treat women. So, so I I um I knew that I I knew my I knew my story, and so um, I couldn't tell Mark or anything that day. I've subsequently told him, of course. Yeah. But so yeah. here I am, jovial, doing an AM show, <laughs> whatever, whatever we did that day. And I went round to my mum's, and I just and I just about a week later, I went round to my mum's, and I told her, I said what I'd been through last week. She just was mouth jaw mm. dropped open. I got a bit upset then, but um. I, I'd be, yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't fair, it wasn't right. The cops, they needed to do, they needed to understand the, what the issue was, what sort of threat I am, um, um, and get the facts. Mm. God, how did things get so bad? Um, I, I find, so, so, um, I've, you know, I've been through a marriage breakup as well, mm. JJ and I, but we've, we've, we've got a wonderful relationship. You know, mm. I, um, I, I get emotional just even, even talking about it. Cause she's she's been, a great woman, I really like her. Yeah, and she's, she's been that good to me. Honestly, I, 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 there, there are times in my life where I reckon... Um, <clears throat> If it wasn't having her support, I reckon I would have, I would have, you know, maybe topped myself a couple of times. Really? Like she's been that. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've thought about that at times. Have you? When? Yeah. Like recently? Oh, just, or? No, just, just, um, just been 
like, I, I don't want to say too much about. I can't speak for my wife, yeah. ex-wife, um, but um, um, so I supported her a lot, and and so she, but but she sometimes struggles with um, I know, um, like with bipolar and that sort yeah. of thing. You know? So there's that kind of thing in, in the background, in the background, and so you're dealing with. Um, you're not you're not dealing with something at face value. You're dealing, you know, when they go up, you go. I got to go up, and you, when they go down, you must come down. And yeah. I sometimes don't want to go down. You know, you talk to people with that sort of issue, and it's a problem. So um, it got volatile because I felt like uh, I felt um, I was unjustly, and it was unjustified the treatment of me. Mm. Um, That's, it's you know, hard. I, 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 I threw everything into the marriage. I threw everything into into mm. the kids and everything, and I I I, I feel um, I don't feel it was right. Mm. Yeah, it's it's very hard being in a relationship with someone that's um you know got a got an illness like that, like bipolar or that's clinical right. depression. It's, it's bloody right. hard. So it's I don't so on. I don't want to I don't want to I only be careful what I say. Yeah. Because I want to respect her, you know. Yeah. But um, you know things like um, kids being used as tools of manipulation or being withheld or, you know, I have kids from a from a previous relationship too that. You know, have, have, can be used as pawns in this game as well. Mm. It's just, it's just, it's, it's been a hot mess, um, and I've just tried to keep my head. You know, try to get through it and out of it alive. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. Choose your partner carefully. Um, um, do due diligence. Um, be careful. Be cautious, and do the right things. But life is not black and white. It's grey. Mm. Like the older I get, the the more grey it becomes. Uh, yeah. I'm the same. The older <laughs> I get, the real, the realise the less I know. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I, 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 when I, when I was in my twenties, so I'd, I'd see someone that was fifty, and I'd think they've got it all figured out. Yeah. And then as you get older, you realise no, everyone's just making it up as they go along, you, and everyone's dealing with shit. You're right. It's like just like like podcasting. Like we, we we I don't know anything about podcasting, but I'm doing one. Mm. You are. Um. So I, 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 you know, I have four kids, and, and I had a marriage, and. And, and the only thing, a license I've ever had is one for a car, mm. you know. Like I can go and get a boat without a license. I had kids without a license. I, I became a father without a license. I'm, I'm married without a license. You know, it's, it's such a complex world, mm. and there's all the pressure of the work stuff because we we're in an industry where um, it's, it's not volatile. a job for life, mate. You volatile, know, yeah. you're not working in the bank. You're not an insurance agent. Mm. You know, so so it's all these things. So you know, I've had a I've had a fucking prick of a time. Mm. You know, I've had a really rough, um, almost. I don't know, ten years, but I can now see the light. You know, can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can because, and I've never felt freer. You know, I I don't have a wife, I don't have, and I'm not interested in, 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 in relationships really. You know, I need to get right in my head, mm. and I don't, I don't, and I have a, a job that's um, I'm podcasting for a living. You know, um, so there's a lot of good going. I don't enough have a good house. going on. No, but I'm, I feel free. Yeah, I feel free. I feel like I've had progress. Mm. I hate paying lawyers money. But that, 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 <laughs> well, no one loves that, that apart from the lawyers. Yeah, yeah, the lawyers love that. So, so, so but I feel Dom, I, honestly, I feel when you gave me the opportunity to speak on here, I, I, I wanted to take it, and I'm sorry I didn't turn up the first time. But <laughs> a, I understand you had a I, work meeting. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. got to take I priority. Hate meetings. Yeah. I'm Mr. Anti Meeting, eh? You know, I, I, don't, I don't go to work to, to mix and mingle. Like, I'll go there to do a job, whack it out, and go. I'm not a water cooler guy. Yeah, you know, like I just <laughs> fucking I see. I, I overhear <laughs> shit at work, and I'm thinking. Why are people coming here to tell us this shit? Just do your gig and go. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know this bullshit anyway. So that's me. That's it. So uh, it's been a rough time, but I'm 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 pretty tough and pretty resilient, and I've got healthy kids, Mm. and I live through them. You know, like my son's playing rugby. You know, his first year in rugby, he's played league for eight years, and I I I just I love what he does. You know, you know, I'm you know one of those guys. You know, like. Mate, if you lower your body a bit more, you'll smash them. You know, you're mm. getting a bit low. I'm one of those guys, you know. I'd, yeah. I, so I, you I, I know what I know what's possible. Yeah. For you know, for young people now, and and and, well, would we do it all? Over, would we do it differently all over again? I bet you we wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, maybe a couple of things, but not much. You, yeah, I mean, this is life. This is this is yeah. the navigation of life. Yeah. Like you know, you need to get to the end of your life and have rich stories, mm. uh, really a great group of friends, and um, have had a fulsome. You know, the, the things I dwell on sometimes are the mistakes because shit, it was fun making them, and it was a bloody horrific on the back end of them. But I tell you what, 
when I catch up with my mates, <laughs> when I when I catch up with my mates and the we we, we reminisce. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> yes, so, so you so you've got four kids. You got yeah. two kids to uh, Mihirangi Forbes. Yeah, I got um, two girls to Mihi, and um, I got I got a son in Whangarei. Yeah, and I got Max. That was a very short relationship. Yeah, it was yeah, it wasn't yeah, very short. Yeah, uh, he's a good boy. Yeah, yeah he's a very good boy. Have you have you would you say you've been lucky in love or unlucky in love? What do you reckon? So, you, so Mihirangi Forbes, you weren't um, married, but you were, no, we were for 10, ten years. years. So, yeah, yeah. more or less a marriage. She's really, she's really um, amazing person. Yeah. Um, what happened there? Just run its course? Uh, we grew apart because we were working so hard. Yeah. You know, I was running around the press gallery. She was running around, you know, she'd come from Māori, Māori media to mainstream media and was forging away. We had two young kids. Mm. Pressure. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so relationships are hard. Drank too much, drank too much yeah. you know, back then, you know. Oh, because you were in Parliament. Yeah, man, it was madness. And I was just you know, making my way through, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the days I was working for the Homes Program, I had two little girls at home, and I'd leave 7 in the morning and get home at 8.30 at night, you know. It's five days a week, you know. And you'd be flying around the world of the country, wherever you were, been to Brazil, Peter Blake died, all that stuff. And you've still got two little girls, you know. Mm. So my parents were fantastic. They moved to Wellington. They've sort of moved wherever we've gone. Really, um, really loyal, you know, and, yeah. and 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 they see past the mistakes. Oh, they, they they'll mark them down and <laughs> give me an elbow. But um, but no one's perfect, though, you know. Yeah. There's people that claim sort of perfection. I love seeing those meeting those people because. Oh, you just pull them apart. Yeah. yeah. It's just full of shit. Oh, there's so many people, especially online, that are holier than thou. Oh, well, you, 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 don't read the comments. Don't read the comments. I say to my mum, who's, you know, sits at home and reads this stuff, Mum, that's not true. Yeah, but they said that you had a brown jacket on. And I said, but mum, it was orange. But they said brown. I said, mum, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe. Yeah. Don't, 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 so for a start, don't believe what uh, someone else's bullshit mm. and don't believe your own. You know? It's a, don't, it's a, we're only as good as you know your last thing you did, and we all need we could all end up in a sausage factory, you know. Yeah, but also, um, I, th- I think failure failure is good. That's something I, I was just shit scared of failure earlier on, and I, I realized fear now, it. I fear it. Do you? But yeah, it's, it's so important though, because that's where you got to fail before you succeed at most things. Uh, like, I bet you, I bet you were a shit journalist when you first started. I bet uh, you failed heaps. I wouldn't go that far, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. I'll tell you a story about it. Rodney Hyde. I, I tried to put a hit on Rodney Hyde. Uh, well, I was just at Parliament. I was 20, 21, when I went, 21 when I got to Parliament. That's young. Huh? Really young. That is young. It's young, mate. Younger than the Mayor of Gore. Uh, <laughs> who lasted longer? <laughs> you know, so, so he is younger from me, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and that silly old chief executive who can't handle it, you know. Anyway, um, and Rodney Hyde, um, who I'd been working closely with on other stories, I turned around and did a hit on him or something, and he called me down to just outside Parliament where the parliamentarians sit, and I went into the chamber there, and he sat me down, and he pulls out this script, which was my script for the night before, with this red marks all through it. Each red mark was a mistake. It was a factual error. And he had 12 red lines in it, one page. And I thought, shit. Now, that was my wake-up call to get better, to be better, and to realise that in Parliament there were 36 press secretaries at the time. They were all checking your work. And you're one person, so you had the eyes of the state on you at any one time. Mm. You were, you were, you were, you were, you were being observed. In everything you did. Yeah. So that was a great, that was great. And, but Rodney Hyde didn't go to the Broadcasting Standards Authority and try and nail me. He taught me a lesson. Brilliant. Isn't that brilliant? That's and, really you know, nice. And I never. And that was thirty years ago. And so I, he could he could have thrown you under the bus if he. Would. Yeah, but he knew that. Um, that I, I might be. I was young. Yeah. Didn't want to bruise bruise me. Wanted me to learn, and he realised that hey. Um, he obviously li- liked me to a point, and he thought, I'm, I'm going to work on and off with this guy throughout a lifetime. This is a small country and in a small world. You come across people all the time. Uh, and he did it the right way. I'll never forget it. Yeah. That's really nice. It's good, eh? Yeah. I, I want to get into all the Parliament stuff. I feel like we've gone straight into some heavy shit. So Haven't we? Should we wind it back and go with some um, fun stuff first? Um, oh, it was all fun. I mean, it was... Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh no, it's just the, the complexities of life. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's dark hard. and deep, and yeah, but yeah. But, but but you know, and, and you talked about you know the possibility of, of taking your own life, and, and uh, that alarmed me because uh, I've thought about that a couple of times. So if you want, to, I'm going to talk about fun stuff. This is dark stuff, and I've, I know people who've taken their life, yeah, um, as we all do. And it's it's a to me, I've got a mate of mine who played softball for New Zealand for 13 years, who went in that brilliant team that didn't get the recognition, great sportsman, and a smart guy, and he said to me, you know, he's been alongside me in the last 10 years, especially. He says to me, um, Duncan, never look for a permanent solution to, to what a is a temporary problem. Yes. 
And, you know, he'd often say that to me as I wanted to jump in the car and storm out to my ex-wife's house and have it out with her about something, you know. Mm. Why can't I get access to my son? You know, why are you playing games over this two, two weeks, you know, the holidays, whatever? And he'd say, not worth it. Breathe. And I learned to walk away from, from mm. trouble. Yeah. So so I learned to really walk away. You know, one night when, when we, went out, we went out, and I didn't want to go out this function, and I thought this person that I was with was really racist to the taxi driver, and I and I and this person was my wife, and and so we had it out, we had a stoush about it, and and I ended up copping, you know, I got smacked in the head that night, You're right? And so I told TV three about all this, but I learned to walk away I, as soon as I was hit, and I, I took about twenty hits, I put my hands from up, your partner, yeah, 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 and I put, I put my hands at the end of it, and I, you know, she thought I was filming, you see, and I just put my hands up and I walked away and went down to my mate's house to stay the night, because. If I'd touched her, the headline the next day is... Oh, yeah, you're Tony Beach. I'm Tony Beach, mate. I said that. I, and after she did me, I said, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a hero. I'm a Kiwi. I'm a male hero. And that really pissed her off even more because I didn't touch you. Mm. And you've just you've just banged me up 20 times. Mm. So it's those things. I've never speak, I've spoken about that before because it's such private, personal stuff. Uh, but... It's 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 what's happened to me, mm. you know. You can't say, "Oh well, I'll cut up my can't compartmentalize that forever." But mm. well, you can't. If, if you went to the police with that, do you think they'd take it seriously, or do you think they'd be like, "Come on, mate, come on, you can handle it"? Yeah, well, if that's it's the domestic, case, it's domestic violence. It is domestic violence. And I was speaking to um, a woman yesterday on my podcast, um, who was an ex-gang member who's who was beaten up terribly and who who who, who came good, and she's an amazing woman. She works in domestic violence. She said to me yesterday. And she's been very loyal to me. I, uh, baby Moko, who was killed, it's her mother. It's his right. mother. Okay. And she said to me, if a woman hits a man, it's, a, it's violence. Mm. So I don't think the police would take me seriously. No. And my ex-wife was relying on that too. Oh, you're not going to go, you pussy. You know, and I'm, I'm disappointed that the police... I think that's what, how they'd take it. They would say publicly that they would take it seriously. Mm. I don't know if they would say, yeah. you know... If, if, if your ex was um, sitting here in the chair for the podcast now, what would she... What, what would she say your flaws are? She wouldn't have walked in and she wouldn't have come through the door. <laughs> she'd say that I'm, um, well, well, she'd say I'm everything bad under the sun. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it depends on what day you got her on. She might right. say that I'm, I'm, I'm a good guy and a great dad mm. and a real great provider and um, and um, she regrets it all. Or she might say, oh, he's a um, narcissistic prick. Mm. You know, one day I got home from, from work and... There was a thing in the hero that said 20, 20 reasons to twenty twenty ways to spot a narcissist. She'd cut it out and put it on my. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a narcissist? Well, what's a narcissist? You know, like, I don't you know. know. I feel like anyone that's in the, the sort of um, I feel like anyone media in this chair might be. <laughs> yeah, anyone that's in the sort of uh, any sort of performance Public game, medium yeah. mm -hmm. probably has like. Do I have narcissistic traits? I mean, probably. probably. Yeah. I mean, I think I think I think men um, possibly have. Well, when I looked at the list, I thought, "Man, back at you, baby." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, 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 I walk away from trouble now. Yeah, you know? and I always did with her too. Um, I can proudly say that. You know, yeah. I walked away. Oh, and and I'd go to the top of the road and be, and breathe. Don't send the email. You think I've got a whole host of emails at home that I never sent. You know, because wake up the next day, do you wish you'd sent it or do you regret sending it? That's cru that's crucial today. Yeah. So it's be, be, yeah, best to write something and then just sit on it. Leave it, leave yeah. it in your. I've written some nasty bastard yeah. emails, you know, and that's um, the great thing is they're just sitting in the drafts. Mm. You don't accidentally send them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, God, you've been through some shit. Oh yeah, mm. it's um, it's just the it's the it's the uncertain being in a relationship that's um that's going downhill and an ending and then having a, a long five year divorce period. You know, it's really unsettling, and mm -hmm. it's not fair on the kids, and it's just, it's not fair on on either the, uh, either of us as well. COVID didn't help because it extended yeah. things through, and um, it's just I hope that we can I hope we can draw it on under it, and and mm -hmm. and we're going to have to. Yeah, we're, what, we're time heals a lot of wounds, eh? So maybe you'll be amicable in time. It's just an adjustment period to the well, new. Well, a normal. narcissist would um, would not get over it, so <laughs> I'll, so I'll get over it. <laughs> so um. Yeah, so there was an article online a couple of weeks ago about you living at your mum's house at the moment. Yeah. Is, it, is that sort of a beat up, or have you, have you been, have you met my mum? No. I've seen her in like women's magazines and stuff. <laughs> <Same> <laughs> age, love you saying that. Same, same age as my, similar age to my mum, same name as my mum, and so, yeah. it seems like a similar relationship. Like my mum listens to every single episode of the podcast I do. Poor, She's so long, supportive. They're long suffering, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Um, they they are. are. I mean, but they, someone has to love us. <laughs> it's her mother's. My mum. Uh, what was your question? Mum? Oh, so, so living, oh, yeah. living at home with your yeah. mum is that, is that a bit of a beat up? No, it's feel like a sensationalist sort of headline. Yeah, that was true. Right. Um, so you're there out of necessity. Oh, I'm there because. Um, well, I'm there because 
I've sold my house and I know what I want to get and I need to go up north to get it and to do the deal and I'm yet to um, yet to get up there basically. So as soon as I can get something, I, I want to get some land. I love fishing, I love the hunting and the sea and the outdoors. Eh? So I want to head to the Hokianga. So I want to put, um, um, I want to get some land. I've seen some land up there that I want to, but I'm doing it with a mate so we're just sort yeah. of, I need to get up there see, and see these people and, um, and do the deal. So that, rather than move st- moving houses is just traumatic you know the guy that bought the house stood outside all day with his hands crossed waiting for me to go you know and I <laughs> said to him mate it's not, you're not going to it's not going to happen any quicker with you standing there like this you know? I had a few mates around there helping me and they were was like, this like settlement day or yeah it was, yeah, like, it was yeah. pretty ugly yeah you know I had a few mates around there who were sort of going oh what do you want us to do here and I said just make sure he doesn't come near me because this is this is getting ugly you know they came round and they were moaning about. You know, they came around the day before settlement and they moaning that there was stuff out at the front of the house on the um, berm. Well, where the hell else am I going to fucking put it? I'm waiting for the truck to turn up, you know. Like, and they wanted money off it. It was just it was ugly. It was just a, it was bad timing. You know. do, do, do you just attract chaos? I think so. I think that, <laughs> but but but, but I, it is like chaos is great because it keeps you busy. Like you know, my mum thinks I'm messy at home at the moment. And I say, Mum, I'm just keeping you busy. I'm giving you a purpose, you know. Because you know, my mum, she mothers me, but, but she's also old enough and wise enough and been around the clock enough and had a few enough drinks over the years to know that um, uh, that stuff comes with life. You know, the ups yeah, and downs. You know, yeah. and you know, she goes, Oh, what's going to happen next year? I said, I don't know, Mum. What else could happen, you know? And so, but she she just wants the best for me. But of course, she, um, a lot of the stuff is out of your own own. It's out, it's out of your ability to control it. Sometimes mm. only control what you can control, and only worry about what you can worry about. Yeah. Um. It's no use. I, I said, I don't want to hear this stuff from you. I don't want to be worried all the time. I, I, I'm, I'm all right with that. It's, it's, it's life, Mum. Look, life's not a white picket fence in perfection, you know. Mm. As much as we groomed yeah. it, we, 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 they, t- they tell us all this shit. They just get rid of nursery rhymes and all that stuff and <laughs> as a young kid because it's all bullshit. You know? So how, how long are you living with your mum for? Um, is, it a good, is it a good environment? I've had Dean Lonergan on right. the, the podcast. He lives with his mum by choice. Does he? Yeah, his mum so, and his sister, though. It's like a three-storey townhouse, so they've each got their own floor. See, this is actually... So um, I don't know whether mum would be pleased to be listening to this or not. She certainly... She knows what you do. And she might she might be considering that you could put... You've just laid an idea that I could start <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, mum makes it really easy for me, you yeah. know, because we were there a lot anyway, because mum... We lost our dad. I lost my dad. She lost her husband. And so she's on her own, right? Well, she's got a bloke, but he's not there. Well, he's not there now that I'm there. I keep saying to him, it's a nice room i got here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so she loves us being there. You know, she's yeah. had 13 years of silence. And now the door opens three or four times a day and it's it's me and, and Buster. It's like, this is her pride and joy, you know, mm. especially Buster. Um, and so she loves that. So um, I'm quite enjoying just the, the home comfort of being at home, of all these familiar things around me. Um, you know, of work, I can work there really in peace, you know. I do a lot of the work there. Um but I, can't, I don't want to stay there forever. I'll, I'll get my money out of the house at some stage shortly and, and move on. Yeah, yeah like how, how much money are you expected from the house, or is that too personal? Uh, or half of half of what's left. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but did you have much of a mortgage on it? Not really, but so I, I sold in the in the worst period possible, mm. and which, which again I regret, but I had no choice. You know? Yeah, I tried to buy the house, and I, I you know it wasn't accepted. Um, and my wife forced a sale through the court, so we, we're selling. And the we we, look, we we launched when. The market went up 0.75% in interest rates. That the, you know, the, and that week, that week, the the breaks went on the market. No one turned up. I'd spent because I did all the open homes because I'm living in the house. I, I fucking worked my ass off morning, noon, and night for open homes to get the yeah. house ready. You try to maximise the price, and um, yeah, all kind of house prices. It seems great, and and I don't have a huge mortgage, so you know we're going to split a, a reasonable good sum of money. But when you split it something in half, it doesn't buy you shit. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, you take yeah, off yeah, lawyers' yeah, fees. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, yeah. take so your lawyers' fees and any other debts you've got or whatever jointly, which is not too bad. But I would have spent um, hundred grand on lawyer. Mm. But you you must have earned some good money over the years. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's it gone? Have you not been smart? With oh no, 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 no. I, I had four houses. Right. Yeah. So I had two places up north. Yeah. I had two batches up north, a place in Australia and and um, in a place here. Uh, I've sold them all. Right. You know, because legal action has been expensive. Yeah. I've been to the court for four years. That, I mean, at eight hundred bucks an hour for a barrister, <sighs> it just rinses you. Yeah. But um, I'm not destitute. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and I could go. Yeah, that's what I wondered about the the, the, the clickbaity headline about you living with your mum. Yeah, it's not like that was uh, just. That, that, it's not like rock bottom. No shit. No, 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 no. no I'm not. I'm. You know, I, 
I, I, I can still eat live and I can put it if I needed to walk out there today I could go and you know either pick up a flat and put it all, all by a yeah, house you know yeah. so but I don't want to rush into anything mm. because everything's been such madness and especially losing the job and everything just getting this the new job sort of up and running the last thing I need to be doing is over committing to a house or something yeah. I'm not really and interest rates are like if you are coming if you, up well if you have some money you put it on an interest rate on a decent deposit right now yeah five percent well, all sex. Yeah. So, so that's where I'm at. I'm just, I just need to let the, the market settle, find a place, and I also want to know where I want to be. Do I want to be up north? Do I want to have a an apartment in Auckland and a, and a crib up north? You know, hunting lodge, or no, yeah. <laughs> hunting, hunting bitch, yeah. 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 Well, I hope you find happiness. Oh, I found it. Have you? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm you're, a, you're, you're at peace. You're. A <laughs> Despite everything I've said on this, that I'm just offloading because yeah. you asked me the questions, but no. Like, when I jump on my electric motorbike that you've just seen downstairs, um, that's freedom. That's mental health freedom. <laughs> I, get, I, get, I get, you should get one because uh, I get you a cheap one. You get some, you get, you get, you get, you get, you get <laughs> a motorbike. I mean, and you can get some air running through your head. Eh? You yeah. know, you get the breeze coming through your face. And and, and and I'll take the long way back to mum. And she's far too close to work. You see, so I'll go to the down Pottsby Road and you know maybe yeah. going down Queen Street on the it's whatever you know, yeah. you know. And all around the bays, uh, you get fifty k's out of it, and it's, it's good fun. Now I feel. I feel free. Yeah, you know, I don't have to answer to anyone. Um, uh, I love putting time and effort into the kids. Um, I love broadcasting. Still, you know what I do with, with podcasting, and I'm, I'm, and I got enough dough to go and grab something somewhere. Maybe, maybe not in Auckland, because it's you know how big a mortgage do you want at fifty? Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's that's another thing. You know, I, I'm, I don't need fancy shit. I, I need stuff that's that works. Mm. Um, and it's useful, but I don't, you know, if I'm, if I wouldn't mind getting a, upgrading a boat, you know, we're getting a boat because we love fishing, and we've got a, you know, a bit of a rubber ducky thing, so yeah, mm. just those things. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, I'm, I'm happy you're happy. I can stay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's nice seeing you. <laughs> yeah, it's great seeing you yeah. too. It's, yeah. it's great. We've got, we've been going for almost 40 minutes and haven't, Have got, we? To, haven't got to any of the good stuff yet. I, I want to go. I've told you heaps of good stuff. I, I've told you heaps of good no, stuff. No, I, mean, I mean, like fun stuff. A lot of it's been like quite, well, quite, fun. quite heavy for you, but you're, yeah. you know, there's, um, it's been a glorious career and I think there's yeah. a lot worth uh, reminiscing on and celebrating. So, first of all, um, so you're, you're born and raised in Auckland on the North Shore, conservative banking sort of family. Born in Wellington. Um, oh, born in Wellington. Yeah, born in Wellington. Um, and dad was in the bank. And they moved to Auckland when I was two. Um, dad was a banker, but didn't, didn't he wanted to do his own, he wanted to be an engineer. But his mum died when he was 12 at the beach in Gisborne. And so he was sent to St. Kent's. And he couldn't really, he, he wanted to be an engineer, you know, he wanted to build bridges and stuff. And he, he had great grades and he could have done that, but his dad was a banker, so he went banking. So he's in finance. So, yeah, con- conservative parents, but also when I say conservative parents, they were pretty loose as well. Mm. You know, we, we, we learned to drink with them. You know, we were doing drinking games with our parents and we had 50 guys from Westlake Boys on our section. We had down the Coromandel, you know, partying and drinking, you know, all our teenage years. So. Mm. When I say conservative, I don't know, you know. Yeah, but we, so when you say to your parents, oh, I want to get in, I want to um, do a communication course, I want to become a journalist. They backed me. Yeah, they did? Yeah. 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 They, they, I mean, Dad understood finance. They didn't understand the media, but they always backed me. Yeah. Like, you go for it, don't you? Know, we support you. And they didn't understand the media or whatever, but they just they went with it, you know. Actually, mine, were, mine were much the same. Like being a you know, sixteen year old old in Palmer's North wanting to get into radio, it seemed like the most outlandish thing ever, but they were, they oh, were fully brilliant. supportive. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, Looking back now, I think God would I would I would I recommend the career now? Uh, uh, for for fun, I, I've, I've got the best the best people I've met are in the industry. You know, guys like Mark Sainsbury, fun people, mm. lifelong friends, Guy and Espinel, this. I mean, they they are they are good people mm. and they're very talented people, and but they're just solid, man. You know, um, and we've had some fucking outrageous times as mm. well. You know, some real fun times. Um, did my parents know what I was getting into? No, I applied for a university in Australia in case I missed the one in Auckland because right. it was so competitive, you know. Um, but I went to a class of thirty people. Two of them were guys. The rest there was twenty eight women in this class. And, and, and why weren't the men applying? Lucy Hawkins was in there. She's a BBC presenter. It's her her brother is missing in the Loafers Lodge fire in Wellington. You know, wow. so I got to know this boy. You know, this guy, this this, this, this the brother of this. Mm. So yeah, um, I've had um, a really. Pr- Journalism t- to me has been a hobby, and I got paid, you know, well mm. to, for a hobby. And I was talking, said I that I haven't done a day's work in my life. Mm. I love it. Yeah, you know, I love telling stories. I, I love scandal. I love um, um, breaking stories. 
coups of politicians and rolling people. It's fucking brilliant. Mm-hmm. And 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 I've been right at that right at the um, um front and forefront of that, you know, parliamentary reporting, you know, hiring guys like Paddy Gower and Tova, you know, uh, mm. you know I was responsible for that. Um we got shit for hiring Paddy, but you know, I backed him, you know. Oh yeah, um yeah, I saw something on um, Instagram just the other day, yeah. Yeah, a moment on your podcast with um, Patrick Gower, yeah. and he, he talked about something about distancing himself from you. Yeah. What, what did he mean he thought, by that he, exactly? he, he thought that he was... It was, it was a he, real he, nice he, moment, by yeah, the way. He's a great guy, and a complex guy. But he, he thought he was he was too busy being compared to me. So when I hired Paddy, he got a contract with MediWorks. I gave him a separate contract between DG and PG, 18 points he wanted sorted. So I had to protect him, look after him, make sure he wasn't exposed and never let him fail. So as my dad was dying at the same time, because Paddy was just acknowledging that in the podcast, saying thank you for never letting me fail. And I said, you're welcome, PG. I'm one of the great guys, you know. The best people are complex people. Mm. The most interesting people are complex people. The most interesting people um, are some of the most difficult people. Mm. But yeah, if you can good. get around all that... yeah. Um, those people are fascinating. You can you can spend hours with these people, and you don't know hours have gone. Yeah, you know. So, um, so you graduate, and then you your first job as a sports reporter at TVNZ. Yeah. Um, so you're how old? Like twenty, twenty one. I was twenty years because uh, um, I went to TVNZ Sport under Richard Beck. It was 1995 World Cup year, interviewing Jonah and Colin Meads and all this, and it came time to be my birthday. And um, Richard Beck, the sports editor, put on this big shit. Cake, so it was like you know he said yeah, I was a, I was a shit, so he put on this big chocolate shit cake, you know. Um, they they could see that I was um, I, I was really passionate about it, you know. I was really into it. This is all I want, ever wanted to do. Mm. So they sent me to Wellington under under Linda Clark in the press gallery, Parliament. First MP election was the following year. They said run as run this guy's bloody butt off, you know. He's 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 almost too keen. So I went there and there's you know Bill Ralston and all these old timers, you know, in the press gallery, you know. I even smelled old, you know. <laughs> and um, this was before MMP. And this is the first past wow. the post. And we were flying around the, around New Zealand with Bolger on planes. And I, I got invited to his 60th birthday. Not that I knew the guy, but I was a bloke. And Bolger was, you know, he liked bloke reporters. So I'd been at TVNZ six minutes and I was up there with all these old timers drinking whiskey with Bolger in his office with Winston Peters in, her, in the mid-90s and stuff. Uh, I wasn't a whiskey man. Unreal. Well, and, you'd, and you'd I, fit in, though, wouldn't you? Peer pressure. Oh, I just downed it, yeah. yeah. And um, and um, then he ended up going out that night. It was raining, and I fell into a pond. And <laughs> Courtney Place, my only suit that I had was all crimped up. And I went home, and I dried it. And the next day, I went out to Bulger's press conference out there in the upper hut at some factory. And I turned up with this crimpy suit that was still damp. And he looked at me, and he sort of grinned. He looked he looked 100% sweet. He looked, no hangover, nothing. And I must have worn a hangover like a dog. <laughs> and I had this half-wet suit, you know. Promise that, um, you know, oh, pull yourself together, you know. <laughs> you know. And he was to blame. It was his birthday. And so, and, but I was 21, Dom. Yeah, so you, you didn't have the tolerance that he had. Well, no, um, I, I, no, I mean, we, 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 I played rugby. We had drinking sessions yeah. and done all that crap. But... but this was next level, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I was with Winston Peters, you know, the night that they had the fight with the girl and the and Brava Bar. What's always, that? What's well, that? There was a fight one night that some girl had to go at Peters and one of Peters' henchmen might have pushed her or something and she scrapped back and there was a big dust up, you know. Oh. And I just remember, you know, eating cheese rolls and just drinking, <laughs> watching the whole thing because we were there with Peters, you know. We, we were, we were the, night, the night of the coalition talks and, you know, there's eight, eight, ten weeks of that stuff. Outrageous sort of length of time, but that's what it was then. And, mm. you know, we were running around and bloody... On boats chasing him and all sorts of things. Were they were they good years? Were they fun years? Oh yeah. You, you, were, you were there like seventeen years. Well, right? I went there. For did you, did, you, overstay, for did s- you overstay your welcome? Only by a year because I had to train Paddy for that last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, you, I, did you just love it? So you wanted to stay there? You yeah, didn't. But I was you. broken. You know, I I, I did love. Well, it just happens. It's it's it, it's um it's the heart of where everything. And in a small country like New Zealand, everything all leads all roads lead back to where the yeah. power is, and the power is you know is in Wellington in that base here. Yeah? Um, so I just couldn't stop. You know, the, everything would be the same but different. You know, not Winston Peters got quite repetitive with his stuff ups. You know, so I got sick of <laughs> him saying yes when he went no and that sort of thing, and that got a bit repetitive. You know, but um, a, a Parliament. I mean, they come and they go, and it's fascinating. New, new. It's like sport: winners, losers. You know, aggression, not aggression, um, tactics. You know, and and victories and, and losses. And I, I loved it. You know, I got to know a lot of politicians, and um, they're not all bad people. Yeah. Like they want the best. <laughs> not all bad people. They, they want the best for. They want the best um, for themselves. Uh, for themselves, for their country. Um, 
they just have different ways of getting there. You know? Yeah. Um, but a lot of them shouldn't be there. They they eat their lunch. A lot of them, a lot of people don't contribute at all. There's only really a handful of power brokers, you know, in each party, mm. and 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 it's quite bland at the moment. Parliament, it's bland yeah. as all money, you know. I mean, bring back Peter Dunn. I mean, you know what I mean, <laughs> Peter Dunn, the bring bow back tie. Winston. You know? I mean, the places, is, is, you know, it's it's two bland guys. Yeah. You know? Chris Hipkins, the prime minister. You know? I spoke to him when he was a student at Victoria University as part of a panel, talking to them about media and politics. And I remember this little guy, you know. <sighs> Yeah, I think it's a sign that we're, we're older. Yeah, yeah. It's a sign that we're old, well, actually. You, it, it's, it's weird. There's weird milestones in your life where you realise um, you, you see the all black line up and you're like, oh shit, I'm older than all the all blacks. Or police uh, officers. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, you're being arrested by some kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I have been. <laughs> um, or, you, you know, you go to the doctor and suddenly, you, you know, it's not uncommon for the doctor to be younger than what you are. It's, uh, friends a, die when your friends yeah, start to die. Yeah. That hasn't happened yet. Um, but you know we're in that zone now. Mm. We're in the zone we can drop dead. Yeah, can I mean it would be. Would you have any? Would you have any regrets if you drop dead right now? How have you left it? Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, of course, a few regrets. I, th- I think um, anyone that says they've got no regrets is probably lying. Don't you think? Of course they are. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has, you know, everyone has regrets. Mm. Yeah. You haven't lived if you, if, if you've got no regrets. You haven't lived. Mm. You've you've wrapped yourself up in cotton wool and stayed. You know, locked yourself in the shower. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, then then that would be your regret, not actually living a full life. Well, not leaving the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So um, so the the, the parliament stuff. We we friend. Would you say you're friends with any of the politicians over the years? Like you mentioned drinking with uh, Jim Bolger and Winston and that. Were, you're, were you're, they friends or no? Are they you sort of keep them at your arm's length. They are really familiar, mm-hmm. and and and. Some of them would like to think that you're friends. And what's a friend? Mm. Is a friend someone you, you catch up with regularly? Yep. A friend someone you talk to regularly? Yep. A friend is someone, or is a friend someone who's familiar and they pop into your life once every 10 years? I mean, I'm, my best mate, uh, one of my best mates, is overseas in Ireland. And now he's always going to be a friend, right? We, we see each other once every 10 years. Politicians aren't friends, mm. politicians are subjects. Um, you're familiar with them. You get on and you like some of them more than others. Right. Like when I lost the job, Jerry Brownie texts me. Um, Annette King would text me. Um, so, okay. That's so, it, you know? so, it's a, so it's kind of like a friendship, but you know that if you have to stab them or they have to stab you in the back, they will. you got to nail them. Yeah. Like you've got to always um, be professional and, and to the point where you could either go out for dinner with them and talk to them, and the next day you ask them. Mm. This is a job, yeah. and, and 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 journalists who become friends with politicians and can no longer do their job properly are pointless. Yeah, are yeah, pointless. Yeah, because you're, you're you're too skewed. Yeah, you're yeah, look- absolutely pointless because you are there for protecting them. Mm. So I wouldn't say any of them are friends. And and and, and the best compliment I ever received was from a guy in the Labour Party, Mike Munro, who was Helen Clark's boss. Uh, Helen, no one's the boss of her. Helen <laughs> Clark's press secretary. And he said, um, someone asked him if I was biased. He goes, this guy loves blood if it's red or blue. Mm. So that's, and that's what I tried to talk to Paddy about a lot too early on, yeah. You, you, you were there for, like, as I said, 17 years, something like six election cycles. You were fucking good at your job. Were you, in hindsight, do you, do you look back and go, oh, I was, I was, I was a bully? Or I, was I was a mongrel. Were you? Yeah. You, because you I was had, feral. But you, because you had to be? Or? Yeah, because you, you, there's no other, what's the other option? Being in Foster? <laughs> like you know, well, no, but, but, but what I mean is be, being mediocre. Like you know, yeah. Yeah, this is the thing. Every night at six o'clock, uh, the boss is your the guy that pays your salary is sitting in his office with TV three, TV one in front of him, right? And in, in, in fact, and we all are, right? So every night for seventeen years, you're being charged. How much pressure is that? And I got into a real tussle with I'm um, um, wrestle with Guy Nesman, who was a political editor when I was polit- political editor at three. And so your work is judged every night. Who's got the scoop tonight? It's fucking just debilitating pressure. Mm. Yeah, the, but but the, I thrive on that for some reason. You know, I would I'd, I'd teach our guys how to strut past their office and pretend we've got something. So you know, you're, <laughs> and, I, and I and I and I call it psychological warfare. So I I'd, I'd, so I'd look at them in the morning and say, "You'll be regretting that six o'clock tonight, boys." <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, and and that, that, and if I hadn't seen them for the day, I'd be like, "Where the hell are these guys?" And if I, as far as one one day, I was at the at the hospital with my dad, and the room we got around, that I had this big story that I was working on. And I was sitting next to my dad who was dying, but he's gone. That's what it's like: this paranoid fear of failure, you know, mm. which is which to me just creates energy, you know. Yeah. 
it, it, it's um it's not normal and it can't be healthy though. It's hey, not healthy, especially and that's why you end up drinking, like Patty or yeah. myself. Uh, it's why relationships don't last. Yeah, it's just, something's got to pop. Yeah. Something pops, Tom. You know, and you can't. It's not. It's not a norm. It's not. You don't go home at four thirty, five o'clock in your company car with your company cell phone and not, and don't talk to your people again until the next day. I'd have Mark Jennings calling me at ten o'clock at night. Great hit, mate. Sorry, I haven't got a hold of you till now. I've just been busy with the lawyers. You know, we're, 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 we're through it. Fucking great hit. Now we need, need another one tomorrow because the momentum's great. You know, it's, like, fuck. it's relentless. It's unrelenting. You know, oh. I, I, I mean, I had um, when when the girls were just born. Um, you know, the phone would ring and I'd look at it and be like, Helen Clark, you know, wants to talk about my coverage of the poll tonight, you know. I'd be like, okay, can I ring you back, Helen? I've got one of the kids. And she was like, oh, no problem. You ring back, yeah, well, um, Duncan. And so suddenly you're in this bloody, oh, God, what have I fucking done now? And then that, <laughs> well, that might, might put you in a bad mood. So suddenly you're arguing with your missus, you know, or whatever. So it's just, but I wouldn't change a thing mm. in terms of that, that time at Parliament because I had to become feral and you had to become, was it a bully boy? Um... Because I suppose there's a fine line between being being a bully and just probably holding them to account. Probably at times. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we went pretty aggressive around Chris Carter and things like that, but he was running around the world having a bloody expose out of the taxpayer. And, you, know, <laughs> you know, Parliament's a place of bullies, mate. You know, yeah, Parliament, yeah. Parliament, <laughs> Parliament, there's an there's a area where they're tussling, you know. I remember, I remember <laughs> David Samuels. Um, David Samuels um, looked at Rodney Hyde or Richard Pribble once he come over here and I'll smack you, you know. Like, this is Lily White nowadays. This, this, this is wussy now. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, back in those, you know, Muldoon, you know, I showed some pictures, uh, some video of, to my son of Muldoon the other night when Muldoon called the snap election. Now, 84, and I was only 10 years old, so I don't remember. Really when he was pissed. Yeah, but he, he not, not only was he pissed, have a look at his stance. I showed my son this. I said, this guy was a tough little bastard, you know, mm. but Muldoon looked tough and, and, and intimidating here. Yeah? He's a short little guy. And, 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 and when he, I didn't realise this, but when he does his. Um, does he give my opponent too much time to, in the election? He's going like this with his shoulders, and so he stands like this, and, and he's like this, like with his shoulders. Like, he's like, like, like sort of a, like, arcing up, like yeah, he's like, ready for a like bring it, you know. And, and my son, my son <laughs> noticed it. He goes, "Look at this! Is brilliant. Who's this guy? You know, and because you know, he's like he's like a UFC fighter or something, you know. And and those were the days, wasn't you know? You look at all the people around Muldoon that day. They look scared of him, even they're his own people. Yeah. So. Um, he wouldn't have been great with social media, would he? Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't have he would have been a complete fade. He would have banned it actually, because that's what he did. I mean, this is a guy that this is a guy that banned butter being exported from yeah. New Zealand. You know, we didn't, we didn't get a license to, to, to export butter. This is what young New Zealanders don't know about. They go to the fridge and they get butter. In the nineteen eighties, you needed an export license to get rid of butter to, to sell it. You know, Amazing. we're only going to sell it to New Zealanders, and we'll become rich selling to ourselves. Yeah. You know, so um, a couple of names you've mentioned. Um, like heavyweight political journalists, there's um, Paddy Gower and Guy Anne Spinner. Um, they're, they're both on like a path of sobriety now that's been well documented. What's um, what's your relationship with booze like? Um, I don't I don't really drink much anymore. Oh, yeah? No, but I, I'm not I'm not, um, I'm not um, like those guys that have gone down that path because um, yeah, I, I just made a decision just to pull back a bit on it mm. because well, I've drunk and for the first um, so we started drinking probably about fourteen, you know, at school. Uh, it was promoted at school. We had parents who put on kegs after each first game. We have a keg party. Yeah, oh, mate, we're the same age. Yeah, you're no, from Palmy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we had a keg party. We had four of them a keg, you know, 12 and a half litres each. Yep. All that shit. And parents would buy for you, know. So this is a different generation. And I look at the school now and they've cleaned themselves up. They had to. Um, you know, we, I lost a mate, um, pissed, um, off the back of a, a dinghy in the Mediterranean on, on the Noe. Um, just got pissed and fell off the boat and that was the end of them. Got sent back as um, cremated, you know. Mm. So, a uh, great guy. He'd love him. Fun guy. Mm. And so, alcohol's... alcohol's alcohol um, is part of our society. It is just here. and It's one of those accepted drugs, right? Mm. All the other bad drugs you can't have, but you can have this one. And it does a lot of damage in the wrong hands and, and dealt with badly. Uh, dealt with properly, it's fine. You know, it's whatever it is. But... I'd, get, I'd drink far too much as a coping mechanism. Sometimes I would turn up to functions and I felt uncomfortable being there without drinking. I had to drink. I had to have a drink or two in my hands, you know? I think a lot of people are like that. So that's why they call it a social lubricant. Yeah. So th that's what I'd be like. And uh, But nowadays, um, if I turn up, oh, no, I'm all right, I'm driving. Like, I don't want to get DIC'd. You know, mm. It gives, gives the company ammo, you know? So I'll say no thanks. And, oh, what's wrong with you, mate? And my mum's a harsh. Just, why don't you ever drink with me? Well, I'm about to drive to Northland, mum, and if I have one, I might have two, and then, you know... 
I don't want that report that says he died with alcohol. You know, so yeah. so I'm just a lot more careful now. You know, I don't, it, it, it is so easy to get an Uber or get a cab if you're drinking. You know, or not drink at all because I'm driving and I've got work in the morning or whatever. And yeah, you know, I don't need to drink anymore. It used to be for me an enabler. It used to be part of really part of who we are, especially coming out of the rugby community mm. and everything. But I look at I look at alcohol now, and I largely just turn my nose over it. You know? Yeah, I think that if people are getting a lot more accepting um, for the most part. If you say you're not drinking, rather than shame you about it. Although I was doing I'm seeing a thing in Wellington a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was at the table with one of the organisers. So I, I was there working. It was their staff awards, and uh, one of the organisers he said, "Oh, you are drinking tonight?" And I'm like, um, and as he handed me a beer, and I'm like, "Sure." He goes, "Good man." Good man, yeah. <laughs> I, I got taken to the tennis by Heineken, and um, uh, they only served me light beer. The, the, new, the new Zero the Heineken, this was oh, a few years 0. ago. 0. Yeah, That's yeah. great, by the way. Well, and, I, and, I, oh, and I tell you what, I missed so much of the tennis because I was in the toilet all night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I ended Getting up... Getting lines. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I ended up having... I was in the toilet all night having a piss. And, 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 I, and I, I had something like 14 of these Zero Heinekens all afternoon. Eh? 14? And I was pissing all afternoon. And I missed most of the tennis. Yeah. Um, and, but then drove home. Yeah. <laughs> you know Amazing. what I mean? Amazing. Now, is that alcohol? Could you give your kid that? I mean, what's the, what's the deal? Well, you know, kids can't buy it at the supermarket. But it's zero alcohol. Yeah, I know. I know. It's basically a soft drink. <laughs> i tell you what, I go straight through you, though. Yeah. Um, so let, let's get on to your dad. Talk about your dad. So, yeah. so he died at the age of 62. Um, yeah. Cancer. Yeah, he had... Um, so... so... You were how old? Late 30s? Mid 30s? 37, I think. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. How was that? Were you, were you guys close? Yeah, yeah, really close. Yeah. Dad, dad, dad was... Um, yeah, um, he was a he was a tough, strong guy growing up. You know, he was always to me big, a big, strong guy. Um, he, he was he was um, he always did the right thing by mum. You know, he was a very loyal uh, father. Uh, we went to Eden Park our whole life. We had season tickets. You know, everything was revolved around rugby. He was a big rugby guy. So I played rugby in my life. And he, but he was also um, he was deeply supportive. You know, he would always he'd always be there. And I knew if my dad wasn't there, I wouldn't play that well. Or but he'd be at everything. You know, he was a present. You know. And they, 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 and they, were, they were married right to the end. Yeah, oh yeah, they were yeah. still together, uh, forty-four years married. Mm. Um, they were just they were such a tight, tight, you know. And Dad was really well liked by all my mates. You know, they, he's he's like, and he was one of the boys, but he was also but still their father. So he was you know mm. one of the boys, but not. Yeah, you know he'd come down. He came down near the the, the Lions tour in two thousand and five. You know, he had some mates. Mates, this was with me. He had some mates down from Northland for the weekend. So the Lions tour, two thousand five. Big dad came down from. They were living in Toto. He came down, and he stayed with me. And you know, we 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 got really you know too much alcohol and great bloody weekend. And he, the Sunday morning, he's heading back to mum. You see, so he gets up really early. I saw that he's all all dressed and he stinks of alcohol. He's all dressed up really. You know, nothing happened this weekend. I'm back back to mum. <laughs> and you know, he got home. and Mum said he stunk. Eh? I came off the plane and everything. He had a great time. <laughs> I, I did a lot of stuff with Dad, and um, I just wish that he was was able to enjoy a retirement that he was denied by cancer. You know, he'd worked hard, saved hard, and and had you know financially was really you know set it set up, and he didn't get to enjoy it. You know, mm. he, you know, I'd I'd like to be out there fishing with him now, and just chatting to him about shit that's gone on in the last year. He's missed all the, he saw all this me on the way up. He never saw the shit that happened in the last ten years. You know, is that kind of good? I uh, mean, uh, obviously it's not good having having your mate here, um, and your dad, but he. <laughs> At least he didn't get to, because w- it would have been stressful for him to see you going through th- the stuff you've been well, through. Mum's had to take it all. Yeah, so mum, yeah. mum, mum's had to take take it for both of them. Um, he he, I, I miss him because he would have given me good advice. And as much as I love mum, and she, it's not bloke's advice; it's mum's advice. Mm. And and maybe I'm a bit dismissive sometimes of mum's advice. And maybe I'm, no, I, maybe I, I'm very I, sorry I, for that. I see exactly. I, I don't know. I suppose as a, as a son, you want to like protect your mum. Yeah. Whereas your dad, you, you know, I, I don't want to tell mum stuff. Saying. You know, I yeah. tell mum stuff, and it really upsets her, and, and she gets down about it. You know, yeah. and I don't want to. I don't want that. Whereas dad would be, I don't know. I, don't, I miss a, I miss a man's advice in my life. You know, I miss dad's mm. advice because I've with all the toughest stuff that I've been through. He hasn't been there to, um, and he'd hate not being there for it. You know, but I just mm. wish I'd been able to bounce some stuff off him, and I might have done something differently. You know, but. Have you got anyone like that in your life now? You, you, you know, I've got great mates. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's if he was a lad, but um, the <laughs> yeah, they've been very loyal. I've got loyal mm. friendships. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, um, I've got a couple of guys who are a bit older than me. Um, you know, sort of late fifties, early sixties, who have become my father figures. You know, yeah. Um, especially up north, I've got to know lots of people. I've got to, I've got to know within this job. I've got to know some really amazing people, some really bad people. Um, 
And but no one's no one's all good or all bad though, are they? I should know. That's, that's why that's why I said it. everything's grey. Mm. But you know, some of the some of the some of the worst bastards, you know, have committed terrible things. Some sometimes they're the first ones to maybe text you and they'll mm. see something. And, are you okay, mate? Um, I can only treat people. I can only I can only gauge people by how they treat me or how they treat my family yeah. and my kids. And some of the worst bastards who you we might think, oh, they're, they're terrible people. Have been nothing but supportive, yeah. you know, and loyal, and you know. Oh, that's the thing you got to take people how you find them. I, I always do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, um, yeah. Mm. So, um, you, you're back to your dad. So, um, how long was he ill for? Uh, nine months. So he got he got diagnosed. I, I was at work uh, at TV three, and that night, for some reason, I, I, whatever happened, I was it was five o'clock, and I didn't have to do a story that night. It was maybe like, something was going on. Anyway, um, I got a call from mum. Can you come up? Your father and I are at home. We need to see you. And my heart just dropped because it's an unusual call. Yeah. And um, I had, um, I think I'd ridden my bike to work that day. I used to come around because it's flat in Wellington, you know. From where we were, so I used to. I went home on my bike to get my car, and as I was coming around Oriental Bay, I just felt this overwhelming because I didn't know what was going on, but I knew something. I knew, and I, I, my oh, eyes, is, this, is this when they the, they told they me to come? They told me to come and see them. No, no, they told me to come and see them. They needed to see me tonight. I'm serious. Now, I've always feared cancer. Dad was sick when he was late thirties, forty, and I thought, and he was in a ward with people with cancer. He got he had goals bladder stones or gallstones or something like that. He looked like he was dying when I was a young ki- young kid. So I'd never forgotten what those guys with cancer looked like, you know. And I just thought it's cancer. You know, I just I knew. And I so I rode my bike home and I got to Oriental Bay and my eyes was crying, my eyes were welling up. And I couldn't see the road. And I went I drove I rode my bike and all the way home back to Murma. I don't remember I don't remember the ride. I don't remember the, seeing the road because of my eyes, you know, it's like with a windscreen that's got water on it, you know? Really like sob- sobbing. Yeah, just 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 just, just yeah. Just thinking about him, you know. Like, and then I got in the car and I, I, I drove um, up to the place of Kandala and I opened the door, shut the door, and I opened the door of the house and Dad's at the top of the stairs and uh, I start to walk up there and he's shaking and he hugs me and all I remember him saying was, I'm fucked. I'm fucked, mate. And I just hugged him and I sat down on the couch and he goes, this is the deal. And he told me that you know, he'd been having physio for a bad back, and I remember that. But he, what he happened? Well, he had kidney cancer, and the ca- the cancer had got out of his kidney in the six month period where they had misdiagnosed him and they were rubbing his back, and had gone through his spine, lungs, and he was heading towards the brain. So they gave him nine months. So now, sort of straight to palliative care. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. He was working. He was um, he'd 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 retired. He was sixty two. He had retired from from finance and everything, but he had gone back to work to run um a charity. I think St John's Church in the city mm. or something, you know. Pathetic pay for a guy with all those skills to do, you know, to run the place. And so he quit that on that day. And um, he said, I'll try and fight this, but I think I'm fucked. So we got some pills, some expensive pharmac type things that didn't work. So we were just waiting for him to die. It's really taxing on families there. You know, my mum was just a trooper, you know. Mm. We were watching Dad die, you know. And I look back now and I think, did I do enough? I was, I was there every day, and right the way through. A nurse who... The nurse who was there when he died and helped me walk the, him to the hearse emailed me when Today FM went under to say, I was a listener, you don't know me. I've met you briefly. I was on the bed that day that we pushed your dad to the hearse. And I read that. That was the day I was writing that the article. I read that and, and uh, I've since been in touch with that lady and that's powerful shit, you know, mm. when someone does that. And so he he did nine months. He fought it really. He fought it, and he he was still this big strong guy right right to the end there. And on the Sunday, I I, I a few weeks before he died, I had to go to Afghanistan with John Key. I've been sitting on the secret because only we, only myself and Guy knew that he was going to Afghanistan. So we knew a month earlier because we were going too. Part of the security detail we had to shut up. The trip didn't exist until we got back. So here I am with Dad. I need to go to Afghanistan. Are you? What do you reckon, Dad? And he's a month away from his death, but it could have been any time. Yeah. And he thought I was going to die. Oh, and if you're yeah. <laughs> going to a and, war zone, and, and there's, I tell you what, <laughs> the, the way things panned out, it could have happened. You know, mm. coming down Sniper's Alley in a bloody Pajero with the glass a little bit thicker than you know. Anyway, um, I said, I'm, I said, I'm going to go. 
But if you tell me not to, I won't go. Mm. He goes, you go. You know, I remember saying goodbye to him at the time. Oh. It was heaviest thing. He went to Afghanistan, did all that, and came back. And because um, I couldn't bring them because we're not, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't allowed to. So I didn't know if he died. How yeah. long was the trip? Six, uh, it was a, it was six or seven days. Mm. It was meant to be, but it got delayed because Key never made it to Dubai in time. So we were in this limbo. I oh, was just drinking in this pub after six o'clock because you can drink after six, you know. So just sitting there waiting for Key to turn up. Went to Afghanistan, did all that, and that gave me a real good context, you know, for um, for being, you know, like the res- guys from the Resilience Project. Be grateful yeah. for what you've got, you know. So it gave me a new perspective. Go to Afghanistan, seeing what people didn't have, and their subsistence lives that they lead and all this shit. Oh man, people's got the average living age is about forty four, you know. So um, I got back and Dad was alive and. Three weeks later, he was dead. Sunday, when I watched the Chiefs, Chiefs Hurricanes with him on a Saturday night at his bedroom. Sunday, didn't go over there. I was just text, and that Sunday night, Dad checked himself into a St John's ambulance, rang them up, and they took him to the hospice. And by Monday night, he was in a coma and died on the Thursday morning, which was a budget day thirteen years ago. Yeah. yeah. C- can you remember your last um, conversation with him? Um, yeah, he was agitated. Mm. He was. He was wanting to get out of the bed. And I remember the last thing he said to me was, well, my mum, because his mum died young, and he started to see his mum. So the doctors said to us four days before he died, he's going to die this week, because they could see the vitals all yeah. change. So, you know, I'm pleased and proud that I'm, what mum and I did that time. Yeah. You know, I've got two sisters, I've got a twin sister, and I've got an older sister, and um, they were there at the end too, you know, they were, they were great at the end. But um, mum, mum did it on herself, herself, and I was there as much as I could. And I don't. I look back now. And I'm pleased that I spent a shitload of time with them. Well, I always did anyway, you know. Um, but it hasn't been the same since. You know, I could ring up and discuss all sorts of things with him. You know, what's the, what are the markets doing? What do you think of the All Black team? What about all this bullshit? You know, or this or that, or what do you make of this or that? And, and he said, "Spade was a spade." He'd tell me stuff, but he wasn't. He was very loyal. He wasn't. Um, he never. He never criticised people. Yeah. You know, he wasn't. He was. If he judged, that he kept it within himself. If you fear guy, um, would spot an asshole a mile away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, Good um, bullshit detector. He, yeah. Oh yeah. All that shit. And he, he didn't suffer fools. You know. So yeah. He, you yeah. know, he went to boarding school. He's got a good, good group of mates, you know, he, mm. he, he knows things. So, yeah, so, so yeah, I miss, I miss Dad, but I know, um, you know, and time does heal. Time does, time does. You reckon? Well, oh, no, 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 oh, it doesn't oh. heal, but it, may, it, it gives you a coping mechanism. Like, yeah. I've, got, I've got, I've got a context, I've got all these things in context, you know, I've got, I've got the, you know, um, I've got all these basket cases on my wall, a head case, a basket case, you know, the a hard case, and so, you know, there's all these things, and, you know, Dad's, Dad's top for me, but, um, I've learned to cope. Mm. You know, I've learned to. And that's the thing. Eh? The time doesn't necessarily heal the wounds, but you just you, you adapt to this new normal. You, you, uh, but well, you, you, you have to. But it leaves a fucking hole. It leaves a massive hole. But you have to walk through it. Mm. And you because the other option is not carrying on. You have to walk through it. Yeah. You have to carry on. You got. You got, I got my own kids. Mm. Um, so I, I look back with pride with my relationship with him now, and I wish you know he will never know what what I what I did. Um, He'll know what, what I was heading to, but he won't know how yeah, how it ended. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big, I'm not a religious guy, and I'm not a big after after life sort of guy. Um, but I had this dream once that he was a, he was a, I mean, he came back as a, as a, as a um, what do you call them? Um, an angel? Uh, no, 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 definitely a not an angel. Ghost? <laughs> <laughs> no, he got caned far too much at St Ken's College for that. And he came back as a fantail, I think it was. It was a pee waka waka or something. I'll oh, tell you what. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't there something? Um, is there something about that? No? Yeah, Spirit I'm sure there is. And every time I'd be at the back of my house. Especially late at night. Don't, don't ask me what I'm doing late at night outside the back of my house. But there would be, the, when I left the house that last day before I sold it, I was out there just putting something back. And in the tree was this pee waka waka, this little fan out at night. Now, usually, I don't know if they ever seen it at night. And it flew around me and then flew off. I thought, I don't think I'm loopy. But to me, that was just a sign off, you know? No, I'm sure it's a, it's a Maori legend or something, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Dad, I don't Dad know. wasn't strong on Maori legend stuff, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he was would have been a different. Maybe it's a Duncan, it's me. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> he, he was would have been a different era. <laughs> yeah, do you think he'd be proud of you though, of, of the man you are and the man you've become? Yeah, because I look, I look at my son, and if I, if my son, um, because some things are out of your control as well, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, marriage breakups happen. You know, fifty yeah. like percent, you know, fifty percent fail. Um, shit happens, you know. Um, yeah. It's how you deal with it, and how you recover, and how you move on. Is, is mm. was always Dad's philosophy. So yeah, I think he'd be. I hopefully, hopefully he'd be proud of me. Um, 
and um, content in the knowledge that I'm a, I'm okay. You know, I'm yeah. still alive. I haven't done anything. I, I, I you know I haven't I haven't been so bad that I'm I'm in jail or I haven't you know I haven't you know yeah I've done lots of things wrong but we all do things wrong because we're human beings. Mm. So I'm still here and I, I'm still working and you know, I've had a really privileged life and really privileged career. Um, and I've been to 90 countries, I've met promises and presidents, and I've covered all that stuff, had every job under the sun, and I'm grateful and thankful for, mm. for, for people who have given me those jobs. I've, I've hopefully I've, I've done the right thing by them and worked hard and achieved things. You know, we all, uh, we've all won awards and things yeah. over the years, and that, that's, that's that they're nice to win, but um, it's the people that you've that you've worked with and the, the people that you've done the stories on and your family and all that, that matter, you know. like For me, all Absolutely. that matters for me is my kids, you know. Um, and they're navigating a fucking strange world, you know. They're navigating a tough world, a really tough world. Yeah. You know, they, they, my, my son doesn't watch TV or listen to the radio because it's all done on this. You know, it's all oh, done on the phone. Yeah, it's like all a device. TikTok and YouTube and whatnot. Mate, he's a TikTok. He's a TikTok yeah. man. You know, he's he's, he's Mr. TikTok. You know, he goes. He will walk, walk down the street. Yo, baby, whoa! He sees somebody on TikTok. You know, I'm like, <laughs> fuck this dude, right? <laughs> you know? Oh yeah, it's, it's it's its own sort of culture and environment. Oh yeah, but it's dangerous as hell yeah. because you know, th- I don't want them to think that life is. Life and relationships are through a lens of TikTok, you know. Like, just he's smart enough to park it, you know. But life's about you know going and playing footy or going fishing or doing ballet or whatever. You know, having other outside events that don't be controlled yeah. by a device, you know. Also, just before you mentioned, um, you know, the uh, resilience project and uh, how there's, there's there's basically a lot of people in the world that are happier with a lot less. Yeah. Um, so if you look on Instagram, it's like um you're comparing up because everyone's living their best yeah. life. Yeah. Um, but you're a lot happier if you just compare down and be grateful for the things that you do have so, rather yeah, than the yeah, things that you don't. It's so important, you know. And I, I don't compare because I can't be fucked, you know. Um, <laughs> um, um, but you know, I used to think maybe material things were important, but not overly. So you know, all I want in life is. Um, uh, my kids to have the fullest, longest, happiest lives, mm. you know, and get into healthy relationships. Like healthy relationships uh, and content relationships is really important for me now. You know, yeah. after failing in that front, so that's important because that's about the health of your child. You know, that's about their their, their happiness. So that's really important. Their money can't buy that. Mm. Um, judgment and being a good person can. Um, I'll be happy to be um, in the hookyanger and, and you know, fishing every day with a small uh, small little house that you know has. That's that's warm and doesn't leak, and um, a four wheel drive out the front with a boat that um, that works and floats and doesn't kill me for the rest of my life. Idyllic, and and, 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 and without any without any yeah. trouble, without any you know you know, uh, and, and if there are gang members down the road, which there are in Northland, um, how are you going, mate? You know, uh, I don't get in your way, you don't get in mine. I'm not judging you because you're in a gang. You would have you would have had a shit life of growing up. I've, I know gangsters who've been sexually abused. From the ages of four through to sixteen, and their fathers went to jail, and they came out of jail. And they still abused them. Mm. They, their lives were set in stone right from yeah. there. I'm not going to judge them. We're, we're, we're too quick to, of course. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I mean, you don't you don't know what baggage anyone's carrying, do you? That's the thing. Um, just sorry, just going back to your dad stuff. Like, did you have any counselling or anything after that? Have you ever yeah. seen a therapist? Yeah, I have seen a counsellor. Yeah. yeah, I saw a guy. On, um, <laughs> fucking funny. A guy on. Um, uh, marriage counselling, right? Because our marriage was on the rocks and I wanted to try and save it. Right, yeah. And so she told me I need to go to counselling. I needed to go to counselling. So I trotted off to counselling at 200 bucks a session and the dude says to me, where's your wife? And I said, she doesn't need to come. <laughs> he goes, well, what? I said, she doesn't need to come. But it's my, I, I'm the guy with all the issues. He goes, he'd heard this before. He goes, well, I'll give you a few sessions and we'll get her in. I said, how's that going to go? Well, I'll, I'll tell you how it goes, he said. And she'll, she'll, be, she'll do this, this, this and this, and then she won't come back. And hmm. she accused him of ripping it off or something, you know. Um, I really found him great. He compartmentalised these things. He took all my compartments off the shelf and broke them down. He drew all these graphics, and he was bloody great. Yeah. And I still drive past his house and think, he was, he, it's like when you, I, I did some boxing in one, and I trained for boxing, and once you train for boxing, you learn... This, your strength, you learn what a, what a punch can do, and so you respect that. And he gave me the tools and power of contentment and being comfortable that I had, had some help. Mm. And everything he said would happen, happened. And I was, if I hadn't had him, I would have thought that was strange, that she, you know, but th- he made it okay, yeah, you know. So he was, he was really, really, really 
really helpful. Yeah. Well, I think it's hard for guys our age to sort of open up, but it's a good thing to do. Mate, this wouldn't have happened years ago. Like, I had a mate of mine who was a really good rugby player, played super rugby, played New Zealand Māori, and big, strong, strapping, handsome um, man, kids, wife, everything. All, all from the outside, all look good. He was suffering depression, mm. the black dog. And I've had mates who, who have who have been pulled out of a car with they've tried to gas themselves. Mm. You know, we got to them in time. This guy came across one night to our house. And I wonder why he just t- showed up like that. And he just said, just talk to me, Dunksy. And he just wanted to talk all night. And he goes, oh, what I'm telling you is I'm depressed. And I said, what do you mean? What's wrong with you? Mate? You, got, you got everything. And he goes, I'm depressed. Now, was it because he used to be... Well, doing well in rugby, and he no longer was. It was all these, all these, mm. all these issues, and so all night I sat there with him. And by the end of the night, we'd finished talking. He was all this weight felt was off his shoulders, and he started getting the rotten fruit from my bowl and throwing it at me on the way out. So <laughs> he was he, he, but he needs that constant, yeah. constant chat time, and that's taxing. It's yeah. time. Um, it is. It's good to speak to your mates, but your mates aren't necessarily trained or well, know the right thing to say or do. But they just sometimes have to be yeah. there to listen. Yeah. Like to to so if you know so we're talking today. And I find this quite cathartic, actually. Oh. You know, quite you know, it's like a counselling session. I hope it's not. I hope it's not, <laughs> <laughs> hope it's not beaten enough for you. <laughs> but, oh but no, it's is, been great. This I is real. The mate. This is it real. Is. This is, I mean, I've said stuff today that. Um, yeah, journalists in the newspapers have been trying to get out of me for mm. for decades, but for some reason I don't trust them, but I do trust you. You know, oh, I appreciate it, that. It's disarming, you know. It's, yeah. um, and we've we've got to know each other, you know, briefly over the years. I've turned up and tried to be ridiculous on on the edge with you and over the years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, during the politics when you guys show interest once every three years and stuff. <laughs> 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 and I, I don't blame you. Um, yeah. But so, and I really respect what you what you've achieved and what you did up there. And oh, thank you. You know, with your with your you know your powerhouse and and, and your running and stuff. You know, like, you should be proud of yourself. You know, Thanks. and maybe we don't tell people that enough. You know. Yeah. Like I tell my son, he tells me, I tell him every day I love him, and we kiss each other. And I never did that with my dad. But yeah, that's really cool. On the phone, he's like to his mum, love you, mum. And even if we might have had an argument, okay, well, no, you get, get no, no, bastard, okay, love you, dad. Mm. He's always, always, always he's, a, he's a deeply um, fun orientated boy. You know? mm. That's cool. Yeah. Well, we haven't even talked about the um, the AM show stuff. I, I always thought there was there must be some smoking gun there because you so you finished up on the AM show and yeah, you just, just you just disappeared. There was no farewell or anything. And it, no. when when that happens in media, there's usually some sort of um, guy has done something wrong. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. But there wasn't right. There was no. no. I, I'd um, so this was um, uh, August twenty three, twenty twenty one. They want so they wanted to change things up, right? Uh, and I didn't. There were new owners. They probably walked in and saw what I was paid, and they put a red ring around it and said, "We're we going to be scaling back." How's what's this guy doing this for? You know, that's yeah, probably yeah, the truth. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah. the truth. Realistically, yeah, yeah. But um, so I knew they were make some changes, and I disagreed with it because it was rating well, and it was it had it, we'd done five five long hard years of establishing ourselves. And so it was you, and Mark Richardson, and Amanda. Yeah, Amanda, yeah. Amanda it was five years is a long time yeah. for um, yeah. a breakfast TV radio show because it was both, you know, hard to do, and um. So Paul had done two years, so we'd done five after that. And I loved working with you know Mandra Mark. It was fun, we had some fun times. Um, but I disagreed with it, and the relationship soured from there. From there, and then I went on. Then I went on. Um, I went on leave for two weeks, school holidays. To my mother sends me to her brother's, to my uncle's. He had a, he had a motel, you know, in in, in um, Topol, and he sends me there, and it's full of the old emergency housing people. This is mum thought I needed a break, so she sends me to this. Thing. Next to me, there was a prostitute hooker, there was the pimp, there was a drug dealer, there was a guy on really serious assault charges, and then there's another family down there that couldn't get accommodation otherwise, and another hooker. And I said, oh, this, is, this is a come to Jesus moment, this is great. <laughs> this is, there was like, there's parties every night, and my uncle was just pulling in this huge coin from work and income and just kept paying these bills. No wonder he sold it and went to the next place. Uh, but... Well, what's going to happen to these people? And Buster's mm. like, who are these people? Why are these people going to their house every night? I said, well, <laughs> well, this is what it is, mate. I must well tell you now. So, yeah. you know. It, oh, my God. <laughs> thanks for the holiday, Mum. And yeah. my uncle charged me 500 bucks for the, for the, for the compliment. Yeah. Um, but I came back from there. and yeah, I came back from that holiday, and um, that was soured from there. So I didn't go back on. Right. I think I went have gone on for two days, and then, um, then we basically... We went, we went into a meeting and they said, we're going to change it. I said, I don't agree with it. And I, I took a line of the sand on it because mm. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do what they wanted to do. So. Oh, good on you leaving on your own terms. But, um. It, it was, and it, it was feels COVID. Di- feels, feels, um, 
I don't know. It feels mean that you didn't get to say farewell to the I audience wanna, that I, you'd built. I wanted to, and yeah. because we were disagreeing on the on the future, I don't think they trusted me to get back on air. You know what they're like to 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 say a positive goodbye. Now I, I, well, I, I, I'm a professional. T- I could have. We, we fast forward two years. What the way you exited today? If maybe they had their reason to be. Skeptical. But I'm still there. That's yeah, the, yeah. The, the, and the great thing about the, I tell you what, I tell you what, with the, the media works, and you know these guys. Um, it's a fun, it's fun, it's a fun place to work, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, it's always a challenge, a brand, you know, especially in TV was. Um, but um, they, I, I was, uh, we, we lost our jobs in the heat of the moment, right? So I'm not going to say, well, I'll be back to you shortly with a prepared statement, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mate, this is fucking, this, I thought this was betrayal because we'd been told yeah. all these things. So to me in those moments, it was. Now I said to the bosses afterwards, because um, they came to me and said, you know, we want to talk to you. Um so they clearly thought that I had something more to give. I thought I did, and but I said all those things, and I wrote that column, and the, I said you guys need to be adult enough to deal with that, and I'm adult enough to deal with the fact that you've just sacked us live, mm. and we both shook on it and said, "Sweet, just go." Yes, and I think that's really adult. That's a really adult thing. This is not personal. Yeah, this is it's business. professional yeah. business, and I'll prove to you guys that you know, um, I'm I'm still sweet carrying on. You have to go to prove to me that you still want to support it. Mm. Well, they have, and. Um, yeah, it's a really mature working yeah. relationship, isn't it? When you can do that. I mean, I, I, well, the things I said about them, don't send your bloody Ameri- <laughs> Australian henchmen over here and fucking do us over. You know, and I said all these things. Um, uh, you're walking back in the door. Walking back in, it's like, shit, I'm back. You know, and I tell you what, people, are, and I've I've had moments. I've had, you know sat down with the chief executive and, and you know and the two I said three I see, and I've said, you know, I stand by those things. Um, it's not personal, and mm. they've said the same thing to me. We've had a really, it's a really good, really good. Robust chat Hon- about it. Honest debate. Yeah, yeah. shit, yeah. yeah. They didn't, they, there's no handbook for closing down a radio no. station. There's no, oh, the, oh this, this is the way we end things well. It, you know, it was done badly. Mm. And um, um, and the company has paid a price for that, you know. Mm. The, 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 it's been in tatters, you know, over it. But 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 um, it doesn't mean that they can't do it right, Yeah, you know. And, and how um, how's, uh, how have the other Today FM staff been with you? Like, do, do they think you're a traitor for going back? Um, not that they've told me. Yeah. And, 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 I've, and I've, still, I've seen some of them, right? So yeah. I was, I, one night I had a decision to do. Do I podcast? What is this podcasting thing again? <laughs> or do I take the legal action? Now, I'm, I've, had, I've had a lot. Remember my life, I've got lawyers running around the family court and everything. So I was over lawyers, you know. I really started to not to dislike lawyers. So... That night I had to make a decision. Go with my gut. Now I'm a worker. My gut said, yeah. "Carry on." You have good enough relationships with all those guys, despite what you've already said, because they need to face the fact of how they they how it was presented to us too. You know, so they've got some shit to deal with. Oh yeah, they, tra- they treated you guys badly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No so, 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 so you know, I mean, I mean, and they ended up saying to me, "Oh yeah. no, you were really unprofessional on your way out." Thanks. So, if that's professional, then then sweet. So we can oh, can we deal with that? They know that. Um, if I'm on your side, I'm on your side. Mm. You know, I'll go into the trenches for you. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity. It's good to launch a podcast with support around you. Yeah. You know, because I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't. But um, oh, I'll, t- I'll tell you, as someone that has um, done it on his on its on, on his own, it's um it's 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 scary and it's lonely and it's um and it's hard and there's there's I've, I've got some help and support now, but uh, there, there's no one to celebrate the wins with. You have a yeah, good win and there's Friday night drinks. What are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's Friday afternoon. But, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. but although I'm not big on office camaraderie, I think it's all bullshit, really. Yeah, you know? But but yeah. but um, uh, your wins are. You know, you will know when you're wins, you know, you look at your numbers or whatever, and you cannot hide in a podcast. Yeah. The numbers do not lie, because the numbers, they will tell you who's who's um, listening, where they are, when they're there, yeah. how many times they've been there, um, what country they're in, and like the metrics and the, the dashboard and the data is fucking brilliant. Yeah, I love it. It is, it is honest. I like, love you it. Know, I've, I've, had, I've, I've had to stop getting obsessed with the numbers. Oh, no, you've got to stop that. Yeah, no, I used to be like that on social media, <laughs> but I came off social media because I thought I was turning actually mentally ill. By fighting people on social media, you know, if you if you say controversial stuff and you are uh, at the forefront of the political journalism and everything, people are going to smash you all the time. Mm. I got sick of being smashed, you know, and wanted to smash. One guy I spent three hours responding to one day. I knew that was the end of me. I had to stop. Yeah, well, you don't need it. Who are these people? That's the nobody. That live in to the you. Fuck was it living in their own little yeah. barrier? Yeah. So, 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 so. I don't, I don't engage, but I've got good people at MediaWorks doing all that social media yeah. stuff, you know, and I'll jump on every now and then and send some messages. Um, uh, but I couldn't have, I couldn't. I'm I'm not entrepreneurial, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not. Um, I don't know. I, I know how to do my business, my job, but do I know how to run the place? 
and set it up from scratch. Mm. Like you, you've broken new ground. But you've got a, <laughs> a neon you, sign you've got with a neon my name sign on. with your name on it. And it's and it's I mean what sort of what sort of bill do you get for that? You know, like it's at least fifteen hundred bucks plus power, you know? Yeah. And it's cool. No, a company do it for free, which is very nice. Yes. Um but your your podcast is going great. we've um we we've, we've talked for so long. How um, long we talked for? Uh, almost an hour and a half now. Do you know I feel like I've only talked about half my life? Yeah. I, we might have to get you back for a part two. Do you reckon um, we'll see how part one goes first? If the numbers are no good then we'll Yeah. <laughs> so sitting um so, so, oh no that's something that's, I've stopped obsessing about the numbers so much because you have a, I have a good chat with someone and it may not get the same numbers as But you've got like shit that. out of me that, that, that people that people Oh that, thank you. That people be, oh, I trust you. Yeah. Um uh, um I don't know what I mean, is it because I I see a like minded fifty year old opposite me or a guy that will understand, you know, if I tell you I've fell into the gutter on this issue, I look at you and you sort of nod at me like you <laughs> I joined you in the gutter. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so what gutter were you in? Yeah, yeah. well, you're on the K Road, second to the left there. Yeah. yeah. So, but, so, but yeah, but oh, I've lived. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have, and I think that's good. Um, just this is the longest chat we've ever had. You and I sitting down together. I, know, yeah. I, I wonder, have you? I mean, you're the same, similar age to me. So, when you're growing up in the seventies and the eighties, shit just wasn't diagnosed the way it is now. But do, do you think you're ADHD, or or on the on the spectrum somewhere? Do you think I am? Well, I, well, I, th- I think I am. I, I wonder if you are. Um, I, I don't. Really I hope know that so. I, 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 hope, I, I mean, I hope I'm. I mean, I, I speak fast. I'm. I'm, I'm I, the guys in the press gallery used to call me Ritalin boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like that? <laughs> so, um, um, I think I we broke a fax machine over that because we, we put a scrum down and whoever won, you know, won the rights not to call me that. But um, um, I, I don't. I think. Um, well. Did we diagnose me as narcissistic earlier on in the interview? Oh, yeah, I don't want to know. Your ex-wife okay. diagnosed you as narcissistic. Well, well she, but she, I think she we put we, a hair cutting in front of me. We, we both agreed that um, there's elements of narcissism and a lot of people. I think. Oh, me especially, yeah. But a woman, woman, a woman can be bad too. Like, yeah. you know, woman can be really bad. Mm. You know, like, but um, what's, what is ADHD? It says attention deficit disorder. Yeah, hyperactiv- hyper- hyperactivity disorder. My twin sister was probably more hyperactive mm. than me. Yeah. Um, but I think I am. I'm an active relaxer. Mm. So. To relax, I might grab my fishing rod at 10 o'clock at night and go down to the Harbour Bridge and fish down there. And I find that really um, rewarding and I find it really relaxing mm. uh, to be doing stuff, you know. I, um, I, I don't, I don't, I sleep, but I sleep across my bed rather than up and I don't, I don't hop in the sheets. I don't hop in, because I'm, I'm a very warm person, so I just sleep, I sleep on top You're of my bed. You're running a hot temperature. Yeah. My, well, my mum said to me the other night, she came in and I, I zonked and I crashed out of my clothes. With the head down, and she goes, I was across the bed. I said, I'm always like that. What's unusual about that? I just I walk in and I crash across the bed, you know. But when you've been single for a few years, you can do that, though, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wonder if you are. I like. I mean, there's tests. I hope so. Te- I mean, tests what does it mean, though? What does it mean? Well, that's the thing. There's tests you can do to find out, but I'm I'm, I'm not sure. But how, I can't concentrate. It would change on. me. Well, 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 I don't want to be changed now. Yeah. You know, like, if it means I slow down and become, you know, uh, sort of more of a ponderous, you know, I don't want to be like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're only here once. Mm. Make your mark and go. Yeah. How's, um, how's, how's your health? Are you, are you worried about dying? Um, like, you know, your dad died painfully young. I know, I've always felt like I'm an ox, you know. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> except, except, except the other night, I'm, I'm, um, um, I was. Um, we're, I was, we're doing some tackling, me and my son. And he's he's just got um he's he's a big boy, but he's just got taller and a bit leaner, and he's doing weights now, you know, and just gentle. Just growing into himself. Yeah, yeah, and um so I notice you know on the field he's he's a good tough player, but whenever he takes me on, he toughens up even more. Like he's like, I'm not going to take out the old man. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> you know, what do you know about me, pal? Was you know, you know, in my day I could I could do this too. <laughs> And, but I'm 50, and the other night he he <laughs> went this little little we went down to the punch of big rugby grounds, and in between the posts you run at me, and if you can get past me and score another post, then you know you win, and vice versa. So you know I'm running at him, and he runs at me, and he goes, "Can you tackle or not, Dad? You know, because I go quite light on him. You know, I don't take his head off. Anyway, he challenged me to tackle him, so I went. I, I wanted to show him how to do. You know, he knows how to tackle properly, but so I went, went low. So I went in there, and God, he was like rock hard, solid bloody thighs, and you know when I hit him. And then oh, my neck just went. I heard this. I, I heard this. I heard this compression. Compression. It went like this. And I said, "Oh shit!" And he goes, and he's very caring. He goes, "Oh, what, what, what did I do?" And I said, "Well, don't fall on me for a start." Which he did. And I just, I just said, "Oh." And then I realised, oh, "Shit!" 
And the last couple of days I've been rubbing, um, you know... Um, like deep heat? Or all that about? shit. I've found about three or four different... And I've even got the spray one that you know puts it out of misery. So I'm just a bit <laughs> stiff in the neck. <laughs> but I've realised, you know, for some something happened in the 40s. Men in their 40s have to watch it. Mm. Lots of stuff happened to me in my 40s. You know, I I used to be able to run, and then suddenly I got... Then suddenly I struggled to. Um, you know, your legs become tight and sore. and Because um, I played rugby for quite, quite some time. And... and you know, enjoyed the confrontation of it all. Yeah. Now everything hurts. You know, I've got, um, I don't know what Richard McCall's like, because I mean, he's played top rugby. I, I he played, he seems know. like he's in great nick, though. I know, but he's, Cycling well, and he's just kept busy. Yeah. He's kept running, and you've got to keep moving. Yeah. So um, I've I've cycled, I've, I've run a half marathon, um, uh, I do a lot of fishing, and so I do. A lot, I always try and be hunting physical, you know. Yeah. Um, but I could be healthier, yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how close um, do you think you are now to being the person that you want to be? Do you feel like you're there? No, I'm not there yet. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not there. I've got, I've got plenty to do yet. Um, I think that's good. That, if anyone says, if you ask someone that question, they go, I'm there now. Are you a wanker? It's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think I'll ever get there. I think, I think you've got to be constantly changing, right? You only ever get there in your own mind. Yeah. But you never get there properly. Um, what, do you, what do you think your big work on, sir? Do you know... Um, uh, uh, getting a house and settling down, settling down again. You know, <laughs> yeah, settling yeah, down. You know, yeah. I want to. You know, I, I, I need to. I need to. I want to. It's, it's, you know, it's, you need a place to yeah. call you, uh, your pad. But my that, my calling's up north. Mm. Um, it's been a lot of my friends. Hard though with the, the career you do because everything is Auckland based, right? But it doesn't have to be anymore. Like what, uh, what, what yeah, we're doing. True, what true. we're doing here yeah. in the central. You know, you are you're a central Auckland yep. as you can be, right? What's stopping you doing this in um, Ikatahuna? Yeah, it's true. Actually, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I take that back. Paul Holmes didn't he do the last couple of years of his ZB show from his house in Hawke's Bay? Yeah, and a lot of lot of lot of guys do that. Um, but um, the boss is just like you; they can see, you know, <laughs> tell you how, how much of a pay cut you have yeah. to take. You know, but um, um, also you have to. Like, life is um, is a marathon. Uh, you know, not, it's not a sprint. Yeah. It's not a sprint. If you sprint, you die. So it's a marathon, and. Um, I mean, look at Tony Veach, it's a sprint, you know. So, so it's there's there's a lot more to give, you know. Yeah. And what I would love to do is my I I I, I in a very non um, sort of Jimmy Savile uh, Rolf Harris way. I love kids, and I love I love seeing kids develop, you know. Mm. And so I've had a lot to do with Buster's friends over the years, who've sort of come into the house and been there all weekend, every weekend, you know. They're from big families, rugby league guys. So you know, I've provided and. Help them, help parent them. You know, they a lot of the families call me the white dad, you know, because I take these kids on, and and I get enormous joy in um and like a lot of kids that you know haven't got the means to or the resources yeah. the families taking them on and doing it, and I would love to one day be able to um have this huge pot of money, which um I oversaw, which I allocated to um talent that I could I could identify in the community yeah. and and. Put them on the path to success. Mm. Uh, that would be my that would be my dream job. Like a mentor or a big buddy sort of thing. Yeah, yeah just like a like a, like a head of a, a trust right. that um, that um, would identify kids and um, bring them through. You know, because a couple of my mates have played really top level sport, and and uh, like I've learned a lot off them about um, sporting success and what's necessary, and you know the, psych- the psychology of it all and everything. And and uh, and I played enough sport to. Also, to put it all into context, there's some amazing talent out there that is just mm. not harnessed. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of kids that make it in the first 10 years who are never going to carry on because they're going to bomb out the yeah. f- physically and mentally. They, they don't have it. They made all the rep teams at 10 and 11 with the dad was the coach or something. Mm. But these other kids that, that sit in these, all these pockets around New Zealand, which their talent goes to waste. You know, I'd love to be able to just be a, p- a small part of a solution around so- something like that. It'll probably never happen. But... Um, it would be exciting. Yeah, 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 it would be. It would be. And uh, if you're thinking about it, I, I don't know, I sort of think manifesting does sort of work in a way. Oh, visual, visualise. I used yeah. to visualise. When I played rugby, I used to visualise what, mm. what, what we could do that day. And sometimes it, it happened, it worked. I know, I know, especially of one child, one kid, bus is a mate in his age. Now, you know, look, most kids don't make it, okay? It's top sport. You know, um, you go to school, out of all these people here, none of you will be all blacks. Mm. You know, you need to understand this. Yeah. They all want to be. So you don't tell them the truth. But I know one kid who who is an astonishing um, rugby slash rugby league player. He's not big, but he's just, just enormously strong, enormously fast, enormously gifted, and enormously tough mentally and physically. I'd love to be able to help him. Mm. He's got ten brothers and sisters. Yeah. Um, and I, I've had a lot to do with him, you know. And this kid, 
I'd love to be able to, you know, get a pot of money and say put him into a, a school which promotes you know, his excellence. Mm. I wonder if we don't promote excellence. I, I, what worries me is that you know, we, in all the schools these days, everyone we're, not, we're embarrassed to promote excellence because it then highlights uh, ordinary, and so everyone's ordinary. Yeah. You know, no, no, no. There are some people are born differently. They have different skills and different levels of ability. Get them, highlight them, embrace them, push them. Mm. Not everyone can be that. Not yeah. everyone can be this. You know, Th- these people here will still be success stories. Yeah, remarkable ones. If we can identify this, they may not make it, but at least give it every shot that yeah, they go to. Hundred you know? percent. And do you think? Um, would Would you marry again? No. Isn't there part of you like that? No. That, I mean, you no. got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Winston. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, no, but um, I'm thinking like the the way that you were raised and your your you know your the wonderful relationship that your parents had. Like, is is there not part of you that like? Like yearns for that or wants that, knows no. what's possible. No, because I'm too cynical and too sceptical now. You've just been burnt. Yeah, well, it's just that, that, that doesn't mean anything. You know, yeah. like, uh, if you can exit marriage so easy, as yeah, lots of people do, what's the point of it? Yeah. You know, like you know, marriage has been a complete failure. Yeah, but uh, as but, much as it's been a success. But no, but do you think you're 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 yet to find that one that one true love, and may, maybe you need to become more the person that that yeah. you're growing into before that do, person is. Yeah. Look, you know. Um, and I haven't been looking, so, you know, mm-hmm. but I have started thinking about this. And in the lead up to speaking with you today, I actually asked myself that question last night, strangely. Is there, is there, and there's no one really at the moment, you know, that, that I haven't put myself out there and I'm yeah. not, not interested. You're not on any of the apps? Shit, no. Was that Are you? No, 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 no. I talked to Guy on Espinner about this. No, it's too weird. It was, it, I don't think he is, it's is he? Too weird. He was on it and then it became a story in the yeah, spy no, so, so, column. Yeah, it's embarrassing. A, well, it was like you with the Ashley Madison scandal. <laughs> well, well, we did it now. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> Ashley Madison, by the way, it's a the, the, dating, site. dating website. And but we did that yeah. at Radio Live. As a, as a, as, there's I'm a, there's a, but there was a big like data leak and yeah. you were on there. We were on there because... It. Well, yeah, <laughs> but we, we were on there because what we did was we were, we were doing it at Radio Live for a... So we did a big thing, could I get a date? On the radio live that afternoon, so I was on there, openly on there, because our social media people right. signed, okay. signed us up. Um, uh, I also went on. Um, I think we went on Tinder once too uh, for that purpose. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> yeah, and I ended up with like I ended up with the only person that you know, wanted me was was this woman with like fifteen cats or something. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I've have seen how it works. I, I know this guy, this, this mate of mine. He, you know, it was a hookup site. He was on Tinder, and he'd say, "Dunks, look at this." You know, I'd be right at his place and go, "Look at this." Ding, 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 ding. Bang, you, you. I mean, I don't want that. You know. Yeah. But how do you meet people there? You know, I'm quite old fashioned in that sense. Yeah, um, yeah, I understand that. I feel like you just you're happy on your own. But then, uh, like, well, my yes and no. The silence for me in my life is deafening. Mm. Right, listen to this. That's deafening. Yeah. You know, like, so if I might have dropped my son off to his mum, I might be driving back to home, and I had this house, and it was. Dark and then it was empty and the girls were you know they're, they're older now like 21, 19 one's in, my youngest daughter's in Wanganui she's living her life my twenty one year olds at university going to do honours and things so you know they they they're, mm. they're away but it's definitely yeah you know, I, I and maybe I am ADHD maybe I need people around me I mm. need something because there's a, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely like being totally. lonely is terrible being alone is fine I, I love being alone yeah I hate being lonely yeah. Oh, I, I love being alone. There's some stats that say like, like loneliness is a, like a bigger killer than cigarettes. Um, <laughs> well, no one's smoking anymore. Right? <laughs> so, um, you can you can vape and still be lonely. <laughs> yeah. But you know, loneliness is a killer. You know? yeah. And my mum has been lonely at times in the last 13 years when Dad has been there. She yeah. said the greatest thing about me going to live with her was that she can hear the noise in the house again. Yeah. You know, and she's right beside a school, Grayland School, and I will hear her. I'll, I'll hear all these kids. So I'll go I'll go home shortly and I'll jump on my computer and do some work. I'll hear the kids playing. Mm. It's joyful and it's it's, it's a great filler, you know. So that's yeah. been good, good for mum, that noise next door. Yeah. But when it's not there, my mum can fall into a little hole, you know. So yeah. so, uh, so so in many ways, um, it's good to be going home too because I'm, I'm doing something for mum. Yeah. Even though she's doing everything for me. I'm doing something for her, you know. Well, you're helping each, helping each other. And I think that's that's a good thing being a, you know, that's what family's for, eh, and friends to lean on. Well, when you families are families, families like your best mates. They should always have the couch available for you, and they should always yeah. be there. You know, and um, they'll they'll protect you and when you're most vulnerable. They won't judge you. And um, my mum's like that. You know, mm. she's at the door. I I I need help. 
mum opens the door and sit down there, we can we'll sort mm. this out. You're you're safe now, you know? Yeah. That's how I feel at moments. With all this turmoil oh, and change, eh? Yeah. How, it's it's peace. It's a it's, serene place. It's content yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I'll, I'll put on I'll put on Sky T V or whatever song. Watch some footy and so this is yeah, okay, this is familiar again. Yeah. You know? Um because the turmoil of, you know, lawyers don't care about your marriage breakup. They they just want someone to rinse you. Yeah. That's fucking brutal, yeah. you know. I wanted to take the other lawyer out, you know, I was fucking threatening all sorts of things in my head. You know, just settle this fucking thing. Just settle it. Stop asking stupid questions and cost me another grand. Just settle now. It's taking us six weeks to, to what we could have done six weeks ago. For fuck's sake. That's rough. Anyway, I'm not bitter and twisted. Yeah. I'm, over it. I'm fine. I, I, I can I can I can tell it's taken its toll on you though, and I'm not surprised. It's an ex- it's an exhausting thing to it go really through. Is, it's eh? tiring. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it is, and you know, sometimes you just don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll be really angry with my mum. She was, I said, when's it going to end? And I'm like, mum. You told me to get a good lawyer. So, you know, <laughs> great lawyers just dragging on, you know. They're, yeah. they're, 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 you know, they're off overseas for six weeks shortly. Mm. How long have we spoken for? Oh, it's been an hour forty. We'll, is that we'll, is that one of your longest ones? Yeah, it's up there, it's up there. But I, I appreciate it. I feel like we're just we're going to have to wrap it up now. But I feel like we're just scratching the surface. We really There's are. So much more to chat about with you. I've, is this a genuine podcast length? Because mine are about forty five minutes. Yeah, it depends. Some of them are like under an hour. Some of them you go up near two hours. Fuck, it's a long time, isn't it? But it is. It's 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 fun though. And I, I, I the sort of feedback. I get from people it's like, they say it's like eavesdropping in on a, a private conversation and I love that sort of tone do you know what the best podcasts are if someone else is in that room and you don't realise they're there so mm. that's the listener yeah and we're just yeah and then, you know we've got it we've, we've known each other a little bit over the years so good day and mm. yeah, yeah but this is the longest I've sat with someone and, and spoken to yeah. them it's like a, a free counselling session <laughs> <laughs> do you I, think I, I'm, a, I'm a strange guy I, do you think I'm, I'm a complex strange weird yes yes you are yeah. Com- I wouldn't say weird. I'd say I'd say um, complex though. But I think um, I think I am too. I think a lot of people are. Yeah, I think you are. Um, I think you have to embrace it. You're a lad from the provinces that came to the city and had a great time. And you're a very talented guy, and and, and you've done well. Mm. Worked hard. And you're driven. Uh, you've driven. You've driven. Like you. Fuck off, worked hard. Yeah. I mean, and probably have in the end sacrificed relationship slash mm. marriages as a result. Yeah, I, I look back on because um, yeah, I wanted to be successful for yeah. my family. It's the same, exactly the same with me and JJ. I, I feel like I, I worked hard on my career or our career, but not hard on the relationship. And then uh, if you don't water something, it doesn't grow. And and, and that's so important. Mm. You know, how many people lift the lid and work on the um, engine of the relationship? They mm. don't. They expect it just to be good all the yeah. time. It it wears thin. Yeah. You lose respect. Something happens. It's over. Yeah. You cannot share the lounge, the bedroom, the the, the, the house, but anymore with someone. Who, who's done something to you or crossed you or disrespected you? So many times, the, the tire, the tread on the tire gets them. Mm. You know. But you, see, this is why I think you could have another relationship. Like you've learned all this stuff, you learn so much, and then um, you take that forward with you. So maybe that one true love. Maybe, maybe yeah. I am looking for that, but maybe I'm so weary and so battle hardened yeah, yeah. that uh, any anything, I, anything that any, when I come across that shows any exhibits any signs of you know alarm bells. In the past, I've said, I'll work on that and I'll marry them. Now, I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You can't change someone, yeah. Um, I, I believe that um, you can't change someone, though. You are who you are. But especially men, like, we should probably only be let out when we're 40. You know, lock us up in a Mariah till we're 40, then let us out under supervision till we're 50, and then let us go and do it now. But even then, we'd have all, we'd, all, we'd be wanting to release and pop, you know? <laughs> do, you think, do, do you think all the naughty and bad stuff is out of you? Um, no, yeah, you sit up. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty calm these days. I, I've still got, in, in, like, um, I think I'm a good person now, but I've still got some inner demons. Do you think I you were a good person? I, oh, no, I, I always have been, but I'm, just, I'm not overly kind to myself. I'm very hard on myself. Ah, see, so you've got to stop that. Yeah. You're beating yourself up, right? Yeah, oh, my, my inner voice is terrible at times. I've got to make like that. I'm a bully. Are you Catholic? Yeah, oh, there we go. raised Catholic, yeah. Oh, that, 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 that sums it up. My best mate, Catholic. Um, he's done some real bad shit in his life and um, he would ring me this is when he was allowed to ring me because my wife stopped him ringing um, he would ring me and say oh I'm badly with the basics dunks yeah I'm a terrible I'm a terrible mate you know so and I say no you know mate, you're just one of the lads this, this, is, this is you it's the Catholicism but the first I blame that <laughs> but it is though because Catholic guilt the Catholic the guilt, guilt is real mate. it's very low Catholic yeah. Yeah, it has to be done. <laughs> <laughs> but Catholic guilt is real you know yeah. and, 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 and uh, that's I worry. I went to this. I went to this party, you know, with all the all the boys, you know, just after we went under. Uh, most of the guys are from a Catholic school, you know. I was mates with lots of guys from different schools. So this is Catholic boys, and um, this is a different breed, eh? Mm. 
Because, yeah. you know, we just, we just, you know, at, at, uh, with the Presbyterian boys, we just, oh, yeah, we, we, we fucked up. They would almost be in half denial and half trying to turn into success, mm. and then they know they were bad. It's all over the show, yeah. Yeah. All right, hey, anyway. Duncan Garner, it's been, um, it's been wonderful, man. It's, uh, I appreciate you coming around and um, having this conversation. I think um, the big takeaway from, for me from this chat is probably just what a good dad you are and how much, how much love you have for your, for your son in particular. I suppose that's uh, to do with um, the proximity and that's being exactly a sole right. caregiver. He's with me yeah, a lot yeah. of time, so that, that's, yeah, it doesn't mean I don't love the others. No, but no, 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 not saying that. I, I have done and they've moved on to the, I'm proud of what they're yeah. doing now, but I've still got the care of this boy, you know, and... Uh, yeah. Alright, well, don't plan on uh, moving up north just yet, because I still, I still feel like you've got a lot to offer. Maybe even that your uh, your best career years are ahead of you, if you want them to be. Well, you know, because I've learned so much from the past, that maybe there, maybe there is, and I'm excited. I actually am really excited about what, what, what I'm doing now, and, and seeing what you're doing as well. As, you know, um, there's a shitload more to do. Yeah, 100%. Best place to leave it, probably. Thanks, Duncan Garner. Thank you, Tom Harvey. Good on you, mate. <laughs>